Rumah Yang Berkatuh, we would like to welcome Mr. Suhaimi Sulaiman. Uh, actually, Alhamdulillah, uh, it's very an honour for me to have you, Mr. Suhaimi, to be our guest speaker for this DBA industry session. So this is for Organisational Behaviour, uh, DBA, uh, Unimas. We will talk about the uh, organisational context today in media industry and broadcasting. Okay, thank you so much Dr. Ayla. It's an honor. Dr. Ayla ni dia selalu tolong kita orang. Kalau kita kata Dr. Ayla tolongkan untuk our show, so the audience immediately akan datang. So because of that, I'm returning their favor. And if you want me to come to speak to your class anytime, I will do it because I always believe ah ini kurang uh, amal amal ibadah. So sharing knowledge is part of your ibadah, you know, because when you share knowledge, you dapat pahala. So uh, I think I'll do a self introduction so that it will give context to whatever I'm going to talk about, yeah. Because uh, tadi Dr. Ayla cakap, I'm going to talk about broadcasting. But I think I'm going to add more to it because uh, uh, currently, I'm the CEO of Sarawak Media Group, yeah? uh, uh, which is the brand owner of TBS. And concurrently, at the same time, I always believe in you can juggle your responsibilities. You can do many things at one time, provided you know how to delegate and also you must have good partners. Uh, 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 who who is in sync with your thinking so concurrently i'm also the owner of sambal style and sleep which is basically uh, a cafe uh, a backpackers hostel and also a boutique all in one location uh, the ground floor is uh, the cafe uh, we serve uh, fusion punya makanan because i love to cook yeah from uh, pasta to local cuisine to something that we experiment so that's uh, the cafe part and the backpackers hostel uh, on weekends, penuh. Macam hari ni pun penuh, you know, because people have started travelling, but we actually suffered during the, at the height of COVID. Then I will tell you who, how we survive, yeah. And then we also have the boutique, uh, which is just next door, uh, because I love to design, because I'm actually very, very fat. Uh, not very fat lah, fat lah, and I'm overweight. So it's very difficult to get baju batik dan sebagainya. So I, I and then when I go to Uniqlo ke, mana-mana ke, they always discriminate people with triple uh, XL sizes. So I say, Hey, I can do better things than your design. So I started designing baju. I belajar mencanting batik and all that. And I produce my own line and it's selling. So my differentiator is I sell to people size triple XL and above. That's my differentiator. That's my market segment. And I tak jual baju. I have some collections for the uh, for the orang yang kurus kurus yang pergi gym semua tu. But that will be thirty percent of my product range. The seventy percent will be those who are at triple XL and above. So I actually corner this group of people because very likely people who are overweight are rich and then they have more money to spend on clothes because they don't have any other choices. Is this choices. Your hypothesis we get uh, the first one uh, this morning? Yeah, because because you know why? Because because uh, when when you're overweight, you, uh, you don't have choices when you nak beli baju, you know. So that's why you provide a range of baju-baju that they, because most of my customers, they will come, they buy three or four, you know, uh, different, different designs. So that's where you have to understand which market are you in, what specific segment. So anybody else uh, doing the same kind of business, no, therefore you win. So I go with that uh, hypothesis pertama. Okay. In addition to that, previously I was uh, CEO and editor-in-chief of Hestra Awani. I helped develop the brand from scratch, yeah. Uh, and I left after about 14 years, if I'm not mistaken. No, I, I left in 2015 and then I came back because the group CEO of Astro Awani wanted me to come, of, of Astro wanted me to come back and re-energize uh, the brand. And then after that, I left after helping them with uh, coverage of uh, election, uh, general election uh, GE14. And then I continued on with my uh, uh, consultancy work. And then Bernama asked me to be the consultant. I was a consultant for Bernama for a turnaround for six months. And then after that, they asked me to become the chairman of Bernama. So I was there for four months. And I didn't find that very challenging yeah, uh, because uh, I wasn't an executive chairman. I was just chairman. Foto-foto rebin. Uh, you know, it's uh, okay. I can do more. And then suddenly I got a call uh, from Sarawak Media Group asking me to provide training content because they got the license, I think, in July 2020. Eh, 2020, yeah. 2021, 2020, uh, yeah, 2020, I guess. Yeah, 2020. And then uh, uh, I, I provided the training module for a year. So I told them I can only go to coaching Friday, Saturday, and Sundays because I have my clients to serve uh, uh, in KL. So, and then after that, they, they contacted me back when they've seen the... Uh, the penny, the module, they say, why don't you become our CEO? <laughs> so, and then lots of ding, 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 ding. And okay, this is fun. 
Uh, so I decided uh, to, to take up the offer. So I left. Uh, uh, I'm on a two year contract. Uh, so this year in July, my contract will expire. I'll be coming back to uh, going back to uh, KL and continue with my consultancy work. And I'm, uh, I'm right now learning a lot about uh, kambing, you know, I want to come and turn that export kambing because I have a cousin uh, who's in Turkey in Istanbul. He has a restaurant in Istanbul, so there is a need for uh, apa lamb, mutton, semua. Yeah? So that's another business that I'm also doing. I'm planning to do. Other than that, I'm a speaker. I, I do uh, for local international conferences. I'm also the moderator for local international conferences. And as I mentioned earlier, I do consultancy services for branding, content creation, you know, crisis management. And communications leadership and also broadcasting so um, uh, one thing that we all must do is along the way in our career you know i i started uh, as a banker uh, at that time the bank is called bank of commerce berhad after working for three years i went to tv3 and i started journalism with almost zero background in journalism uh, but i had three years of uh, finance and banking so i was a uh, i started as a eco economics and finance reporter because i had that three years yeah. So um, now I think it has been 30 years uh, in journalism, in leadership, in management and all that. So I actually monetize all the experiences. Uh, and one thing I realized uh, during uh, my uh, um, after being a broadcast journalist for about 15 years, I realized that when I interview people for, on television, many CEOs, many leaders are afraid to be interviewed on television. You know, because they are afraid to fail. Yeah. So then, how do I translate this to business opportunities for me? So and I said, ah, I can make uh, make them confident to be interviewed by uh, TV journalists, and this is a good business proposition. So I, uh, I at that time, TV three uh, started a, a college called. Um, uh, uh, Academy TV3, and then later on it was changed to um, um, uh, MIM. I forgot what it stands for. Um, so you basically teach uh, uh, fr kids fresh out of schools and give them diploma in broadcasting. And uh, but also there's a special course where you uh, provide two day training for CEOs, board members, uh, chairman, and others uh, who would be facing the media. So I was the one who provided that training. So I came up with the syllabus. I came up with a training module and all that. And after that, when they closed down Academy TV3, I used that module for my own business. So that's how I got into the consultancy business. So anything that you do along the way, you have to put it on a piece of paper, make it a module and go into consultancy work. So in addition to provided that kind of training, I'm also an executive coach. You know, there are many CEOs out there who are Actually, they know what they're doing, but they need somebody else to tell them, hey, you're doing OK, you're doing OK, a mentor sort of. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and, and we provide them with checklists. What do you do? Month number one, month number two, month number three. I will share with you uh, later on uh, that, that part of what I do. And, uh, and you get paid for it, you know, and, and you do your work in Starbucks for one hour uh, on a Saturday or Sunday and get paid for it. And they pay you really, really well. So, so that's the consultancy business because that's what I learned when I was on attachment at CNN in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, in, 20, in 2014, I was sent by Astro to learn uh, to make Astro as great as CNN. So I went to CNN. Uh, I was on attachment. Ni macam intern lah, tapi intern untuk orang tua, you know. So uh, at 2014, I was there and I was so amazed at how they run the organization. And at the same time, I learned a lot about executive coaching because in America, there are many CEOs who would hire uh, mentors, uh, executive coach to help them to chart their own path of growth. Yeah, meaning uh, they know what they're doing, but they need somebody to do the calibration, to do the KPIs for them. They set for the company. Yeah. So that is, uh, uh, I think, um, uh, I will continue to do that right after my contract is done with Sorok Media Group. It is a great uh, business. It is uh, it's something good because you know uh, what you have been doing all this while and you want to share that with the public. So that's basically a bit about me, a bit about me. Okay, let's move to the next uh, slide. Uh, the, the next slide. Okay, basically what I'm going to talk about after this is just based on, is based on, 
uh, apa dia, um, uh, there are lots of theories, there are lots of uh, experiences, there are lots of learnings. Basically, okay, my Bible is Harvard Business Review. I learn a lot of, uh, uh, um, uh, I religiously read and follow Harvard Business Review. Um, uh, if you're not on Harvard Business Review, why don't you subscribe? I think it's 800 satu tahun, I think, but it's worth it. It's super duper worth it. And uh, it has been my guide for the last 20 years in management and also leadership. And some of the things I'm going to share with you uh, is a combination of what I've learned from Harvard Business Review. I thought I'd be Harvard, you know, uh, not bright enough to go to Harvard, but, you know, but Harvard provided uh, uh, easy to understand uh, modules uh, on Harvard Business Review online. So here are some of the things that I got from uh, Harvard and also I champo. I think it's basically just 30% Harvard Business Review and the other 70% of what I've learned for the last over the last uh, as, uh, over the last 30 years lah, yeah? Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, this is where we start. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, I always believe in whatever you do, uh, if you're in academia, ke, if you're in civil service, ke, or if you are in any uh, profession, if you're a leader or whatever, you have to have a mindset of an entrepreneur. Yeah, you must have. What, what is a mindset of an entrepreneur? Simple. Entrepreneur is not just about profitability. Ta, you know, it is basically to do end to end, meaning uh, you must know how to start something if you are doing a project and how the project will end. Okay, my frustrations in uh, in the last 30 years uh, of my career, yeah, I noticed that in many organizations, people will come and do something and then, okay, this one will pass to, okay, that, that, okay pass to another division or to the boss. So if people ask them, so what's the status of the project? Oh, I have uh, passed pada ni dah, okay? uh, belum check dengan dia. Oh, I've passed to this person. So that is not entrepreneurial punya mindset, yeah? So you must have an entrepreneur mindset. For example, from uh, A to Z, A to Z, American A to Z. From A to Z, yeah. Sometimes you cannot control uh, the uh, the product or the uh, how the project would flow, you know. But somehow you must be able to influence. So I think the word that we must use every day is how do you influence decision making? Influencing is very very important in order to get things done. So number one is uh, uh, you must, uh, in order to be a leader, you must have an entrepreneurial mindset. And if you want to be a CEO or a, a managing director, here are the checklists. Yeah? Be an entrepreneur if you want to lead an organization. Number one, I put there, you must have a solution to a problem or solutions to problems. Yeah? If you are, for example, uh, I've always been uh, in uh, the business in, in, the, in the private sector. Only when I was with Banama, I jadi gomen sekejap. So I said, oh, susah ni jadi gomen. You know? <laughs> you know? So that's why I didn't last long. Uh, you know? But with the Sarawak Media Group, yeah, it's owned by the state, but we are allowed to, uh, we function as a business entity. So that gives you that flexibility, which I really, really like. Yeah. So why do you exist? Why must an organization exist? An organization or a business organization, you exist because you have solutions to problems. If not, do not exist at all. Okay, I give an example. For example, my business, uh, uh, I have a boutique. My boutique specifically untuk orang-orang gemuk. You know, this is for pet people. Yeah, pet people, they are beautiful people. They are rich, so they can spend a lot. So that's my differentiator. I provide solutions because they couldn't find clothes elsewhere. So that's the solution, number one. Okay, number two, uh, uh, in Malacca, there are not many uh, uh, Malay establishment, yeah, halal establishment, which is very classy, yeah, which is very classy. It's like uh, you go to a place which is halal, yeah, and then you feel that you're actually dining in New York or in Europe. So that's basically what my place stands for. You know, people come here because they want to dine with an air, an air conditioned place and, and, and with the, with the ambiance or the music that we play, like you feel that you're in Europe. So that's the differentiator. So the, what is the problem? The problem statement is in Malacca, they don't have places like that, maybe one or two. Yeah. But I provide the solutions. So, hey, if you want to feel good, if you want to entertain your clients, yeah, uh, the TYT of Malacca comes here regularly on a Sunday, uh, you know, normally after his jogging session, uh, the TYT of Malacca will be here. Huh? Tun Ali will come and have his uh, uh, telur, uh, tiga suku masa and 
Rutibaka, very simple man. Yeah, and if I'm not around, he will call me. So when I, when I was back in Kuching, he will say, "Hey, saya di kedai awak ni, awak kat mana?" I mean, Kuching. I'll be back soon. Yeah. So uh, that is a, a place uh, for people to mingle. So I provide that solution to the problem. Yeah. Number one. Number two. Do you are you a differentiator? Your products too ada tak differentiation dia. Differentiation is so important. Because if not, don't go there, don't even bother. You know, for example, TVS. TVS, what's the differentiator for TVS? Number one, okay, before that, I would like to go uh, one step back. What is the problem, what is the solutions that TVS uh, uh, provides to, uh, to almost everybody? Satu, because uh, lots of things, banyak perkara-perkara yang berlaku di Sarawak, tidak dapat apa uh, uh, apa uh, are not being reported contohnya yeah uh, yes you have newspapers yes you have uh, you have newspapers in Sarawak but you realize that less and less people are reading physical newspaper number one yeah number two the younger generations are reading online but there are many places where you don't have connectivity yeah what the government is doing tidak sampai kepada akar uh, you know oh, I would say akar umbi is that the right word yeah people in kawasan pedalaman for example but uh, one thing good about Sarawak ialah di kawasan pedalaman ada astro punya dish which I find very interesting yeah so uh, here is an opportunity for the state to tell the people we have done this development we have done this development therefore the news will get to them and furthermore furthermore you also need to reach out to the bigger uh, Malaysia yeah Here's the Sarawak audience, and then here's the, uh, Malaysia as a country. Now, um, the population of Sarawak is 2.8, 2.9 million, yeah, right now. Yeah, but if you, but uh, the latest data that I received on the 30th of uh, December, which is basically a couple of days ago, uh, TVS, we have a reach of 8 million audience, meaning in addition to the 2.8 million, if all of the people in Sarawak uh, were watching, uh, have been watching TVS, maybe six million more are from Semenanjung. So that means here's an opportunity. If you would want to advertise on TVS, you will also get that reach in Semenanjung. Yeah. So for Sarawak Tourism Board, for example, so this is a place for them to promote tourism to the max. Yeah. So this is basically we provide solutions to that problem. Okay. What is the differentiator? One, one of the reasons why people in Semenanjung tune in to TVS is they love the uh, what you call hyper local content yeah maybe they don't understand bahasa iban or bidayu yeah uh, uh, even uh, to some people uh, kelaka sarawak is quite difficult for them to understand now i've been in the uh, in in sarawak so i can actually understand maybe i have difficulties speaking yeah but i faham you know uh, i faham jadi uh, but even then that is not a problem because they love the storytelling because there is a uh, 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 relatability people can relate to it yeah because of that that is that differentiator so tvs provides that differentiator so that is why we're kind of successful we got 8 million people watching us so that's very good you know uh, in in, uh, in in less than two years in one year kemudian do you have uh, you why do you want to become an entrepreneur or a leader your business must have good business model and the business is sustainable now the tv business is a very very expensive business to go in you know uh, you need funders ataupun if you are the owner you need very deep pockets thank god Sarawak media group is owned by the state government Sarawak ni kaya okay uh, sekarang dengan petrol tax lagi lagi kaya so we have funders with deep pocket so this is where you can innovate yeah you you uh, you can play with lots of things yeah uh, for example where i used to work for astro astro is owned by one of the richest men in malaysia ananda krishnan very deep pockets yeah jadi the tv business it's a very, very expensive business. And also the media business is an expensive business. That was why Otusan terpaksa tutup because uh, uh, revenue tak banyak, yeah? but the cost is very high. So your business must have a good business model and business too can be sustainable. Yeah? We are sustainable because I think this is where I salute the Chief Minister, uh, uh, Dato' Padinggi, he has vision. He has vision because ramai anak-anak Sarawak, uh, when, when we open TVS, ramai anak-anak Sarawak yang apply tu, they are working in uh, um, in Singapore, yeah, in KL. So now, when you have graduates from Unimas ke, Swinburne ke, you know, 
so they can actually work directly dengan TBS satu kedua they can open uh, uh, apa ni uh, production houses and kita beli produk dia orang so at the moment uh, i think we would buy 50% of the content that we produce we kita source from uh, production houses owned by Sarawakians or uh, uh, half owned by Sarawakians who are based in Semenanjung so this is how you you uh, get the content industry to grow and furthermore uh, Indonesia is going to move their uh, capital to Kalimantan what does that mean it is just next door yeah so it will open a lot of creativity punya uh, content opportunities where you can actually serve the next door neighbor that is why now we already have uh, uh, content contributors from Indonesia yeah uh, soon we have Pola Malai Ali uh, producing content from Brunei. So TBS, uh, so our uh, our business model here is we are not serving Sarawak, okay? We are not serving Malaysia. We are international. That's where we are heading. So that is basically what we must do, yeah? So make it sustainable. So that's the value proposition to clients, stakeholders, and et cetera. And also, uh, why I said in the very first part just now, you must have an entrepreneurial mind is you must have knowledge, connection, talents, resources, and a great team. So if you want to lead, you must have all this. Yeah? Kalau tidak, agak susah kita. Yeah? Next, you must have the energy, uh, no charm, and also intelligence. Okay, uh, uh, I don't have a life uh, in TVS. You know? I go to work at 8 o'clock in the morning. I will, be, I will only go home at 9 o'clock. And then on weekends also, I work. Uh, because I feel that, you know, um, you must have that energy as an entrepreneur. For example, just like uh, our cafe here in, Kuala, uh, in, in Malacca, you, know, you start very early in the morning and then you finish very late. That's basically what life is, you know. Uh, I've not known anything. I tak pernah bekerja 9 to 5. I tak pernah bekerja 8 ke 4 setengah ke tak pernah. Because I always believe that it is after people have gone home, it's actually where you can, you can catch up with what you uh, work with your work your reports and your projections. Yeah, uh, When I used to work for the bank, uh, bank was such a boring job. Anybody bankers here? Uh, I was a banker for three years. Yeah, uh, But the bank taught me a lot of things about finance, about return on investment, about reading uh, the annual report. That's so important for entrepreneurs and also leaders. Yeah, And then moving on is uh, uh, the final part, which is very important as an entrepreneur, as a CEO, you must, uh, if you are, uh, uh, let's say you're a startup, you must have funds to start the business. And uh, for example, when I started my business, well, actually, I started my business a long time ago. When, uh, when I was small, my parents forced me to sell something so that they will have entrepreneurial spirit in me, you know, because my father was very poor. So he worked for a Chinese uh, kedai. So he actually saw how this Chinese pakai sempua, you know, uh, calculate the sempua. And uh, he said, hey, you must do like the Chinese, huh, Mr. Ong. Uh, you know? uh, so the Chinese are so entrepreneurial because I believe that it's in their DNA somehow. You know? So my father learned a lot from uh, Chinese entrepreneurs. His friends are basically the Chinese in Melaka. And my father was the first Malay to actually taught in a... A Chinese school. There, there was a Yokbin school. I don't know whether that school is still in Malacca, Mr. Ong. Uh, uh, Yokbin, my father actually taught mathematics. Malay teaching mathematics is unheard of at that time. You know, uh, so normally there was a Malay teacher teaching Bahasa Melayu, you know. So my father taught mathematics because my father was super duper brilliant when it comes to mathematics. So he said, you must learn from the Chinese. It's in their culture to do business. So I started business when I was very, very young. So I, 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 my, my father, uh, we have kebun, belakang rumah, so I sold kangkung, I sold lots of things, and I love getting money. At that time, if you have 2 plus sen, you go to school, you're rich, you know. Uh, it was in 1969, I was standing at 1, 1969. So I brought to school more than 50 sen because I jual kangkung, so I was very rich. I bought everything, rubber band, elastic, gasing, whatever, I was so rich. I buy lots of erasers every day because I didn't need to ask my parents for money. So that is that entrepreneurial spirit in me. When I studied in America, I sold uh, chapati, la, roti telur, la, you know, to the Americans and they love it. And I bought a car from just selling uh, 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 curry puff yeah, uh, during summer school. So I bought, and not just a normal, long, boring American Mustang. Yeah, 
uh, I bought Renault Le Car. It's an imported car, and and Hyundai from Korea. So so you must have that entre uh, entrepreneurial skills in you. So uh, uh, as a conclusion to this particular slide, whatever you do, be it civil service, academia, whatever it is, you must have an entrepreneurial mindset. Yeah, end to end. Jangan pass 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 ke orang. And if you need to pass, okay, buat ni, ni, have control, influence the flow of the process. That's number one. And can we go to the next slide? I mean, I'm enjoying this. I think I can finish the slides by 11 o'clock and then you guys can ask me questions. Right? Now, you will have an edge if you have the floor. Your time also, uh, Mr. Saini. Uh, tak kisah, kita orang okay je. Okay je. Okay, boleh. Okay. You have an edge if you have the following right building blocks. Now, in order to be a leader in a business organization or any organization, here are the right building blocks. Yeah. For example, I uh, for these two years, I'm based in Kuching. I have a very good business partner, Namadi Ashraf. So he runs the business, he runs the cafe, he runs the boutique, he runs the backpackers hostel, so he leads. Yeah. And uh, I've been doing business with him for quite a long time. Yeah. We met at an old boys association. Both of us went to Malay College in Kuala Kangsa. It's a fully residential school. And we have a very uh, strong alumni, uh, an old boys association. So every year we will have a uh, 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 annual dinner. So we will perform, we'll get people. So we are in the organizing committee. So he's impressed by my entrepreneurial skills and I was also impressed with his organizational skills. So he's the micro guy. You know, I'm not a micro guy, I'm very macro. I am the vision guy. So I knew where to take the business for the next one, two, three, four, five, ten years. Yeah. But Ashraf is very meticulous. You know, I can't stand him somehow sometimes because he's an engineer by training. Jadi engineer ni, kalau nak tak wire pun kena betul, betul, betul. Very micro. Yeah. But that's good in business because you need to look at the numbers. So you need to have a good partner in any business, in anything. If you're a leader in whatever it is, uh, normally CEOs are vision. People must have that vision. Uh, you know, you need somebody who's quite micro. So he is the micro one. So you need a good partner. Uh, if you are in uh, uh, manufacturing, you must make sure that your suppliers are reliable. Yeah. For example, in our case, for our cafe, uh, for the uh, the important ones, yeah, bukanlah bawang ke minyak ke, you can buy. But really, really the good, the, the the most important ones are like you know the paste, sambal hitam, you source dari pada mana. Yeah. So we have good suppliers, and we take care of our suppliers. Yeah. And the most important thing is mentor. Okay. I also have mentors my mentors are not as successful as i am you know but a mentor is like a shrink <coughs> you know for example there are certain common sense you know but they will provide uh, the check and uh, the, uh, 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 they will take the boxes for you yeah so you must have that you must have a good partner number two value proposition yeah what is the value proposition that you give uh, to whatever your clients couple as i as i touched that one uh, earlier so, for example, what is that X factor? So, the reason why I think I qualified to be the CEO of Sarawak Media Group is because I have that X factor. I have the, uh, uh, the, the knowledge, I have the experiences, and I know where to bring uh, Sarawak Media Group to the next level. And I think we are, uh, and I'm very lucky because the people in Sarawak Media Group, they are very, very enterprising and they are young. 90% of them are fresh graduates. Dari Swinburne lah, dari Unimas lah, dari, you know. And these are ninety percent tak pernah kerja langsung. They they are they're fresh, yeah. But they have a very very good attitude. So once you have good attitude, to me, your CGPA you can have side CGPA. Kalau you tak ada good attitude, gone. Yeah. Even if your CGPA is low, but you can think, you are street smart. You know, you you learn a lot. So the uh, you will provide that X factor. That's what I mean by X factor. Yeah. In any organization, you must have the X factor, and you have to know what products or services to sell. Yeah, that's value proposition. The next is market. The right market, is it big enough uh, to, uh, for sustainability? You have to ask that question. You know, why go into a business that you can't survive you know, and, uh, and memenatkan badan? So it has to be sustainable. Next is your customer relationship. You need to be good with your customers. So dekat sini, I jadi macam mascot lah. You know, I will sit in front, outside the shop. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. So I... I didn't mention GRO lah, you know, uh, GRO, but a, a good one. Yeah. So there must be, uh, you must have that relationship. And many of our uh, patrons, they are repeat customers. 
and, and uh, in my consultancy work, uh, for example, I, I consult uh, Agrobank, you know, I consult uh, um, big organizations and small and so medium organizations, and uh, uh, they would come back for refresher courses year after year after year. Because once you have that relationship and they trust what uh, your knowledge, then you will come back. So it's easy. Jadi maksudnya, if you have your existing customer, so your grab is just like this, and then you find new one, naik sikit, naik sikit, so you grow. Yeah? So that's basically what market and customer relationship is. Channels, you must know the right channels yeah? for communication strategy, uh, TV ke, online ke, you know, um, most of the people follow me on my social media. In my social media, uh, I position myself as I'm this fun CEO. I'm not your normal CEO yang berpura-pura macam macam bagus and all that. So I'm fun, you know. Uh, and uh, and I need to be youthful. Yeah, uh, I'm 60 years old this year, but I think I'm young in energy. So you need to be young all the time. This is what I uh, advise. Uh, I have clients who are politicians. Yeah. So for politicians, you must always be youthful, no matter how old you are. That is why politicians ataupun royal family, dia kalau ada anak angkat kecil-kecil pun akan bawa anak akan dukung, you know, so to soften your image. So, so I advise them on, on, on things like because you have to brand yourself and to be seen as youthful, energetic and bright. So that's the positioning of leaders. Yeah, You must have that great communication strategy and you have to know which channels to use. Okay, revenue streams. Now, um, the media industry is very much affected uh, because there is Facebook, ada Google, ada YouTube dan sebagainya and they are taking away uh, uh, advertising revenue from the traditional media. Yeah, TV for example. For example, uh, kalau dalam television, uh, kita nak advertise tu sangat mahal. Yeah, maybe paling murah pun about 30,000, 40,000. So you get your airtime. Yeah? But uh, in Facebook, is so cheap. For example, uh, uh, before COVID, I would buy katakanlah 100 ringgit, 200 ringgit on Facebook. So I tell Facebook, okay, uh, please promote uh, my content. It's a video, katakanlah uh, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. I'm targeting Singapore. I want rich people from Singapore, people who love food, people who love to travel. And, and then you put it on Facebook. And uh, true enough, within a week, uh, on weekends, I will get people from Singapore. So I will ask them, where do you know, how do you get to know about our, uh, our establishment, our cafe? So, oh, from Facebook. So it works. Yeah? So now, traditional media would have to fight with um, a new media. Now, so how do you survive uh, given all this um, uh, competition? So media companies have to be really smart. So now that's why media companies like CNBC, you know, they, they, they don't get money from subscription or advertising anymore. They go for content. They, sorry, they go for event. Yeah. So the events later on become content. So they have lots of conferences and all that. So they make money from conferences. Yeah. So you have to know your new revenue streams. So you cost, your cost structure. Yeah. I want to tell you a story about the cost structure. Okay. Uh, my, our cafe, we were very, very badly affected during um, COVID because uh, uh, if you run an, uh, a cafe like me, like mine, you must have at least 1,500 revenue per day. Yeah, If not, uh, yeah, that, because with 1,500, meaning you pay for all your costs, you make a profit and you have some funds to stash aside. Yeah, uh, Should you need, uh, should there be emergencies and all that. Now, during uh, COVID, uh, at first we were not allowed to uh, uh, to open at all, and then later on, barulah boleh apa, uh, take away orders. When we were not allowed to operate, yeah, so only uh, um, uh, what we did was we were very lucky. You know, luck has always been on my side. Uh, Hundred uh, meters away from our cafe, there was a. Uh, an organization called Singtel. Singtel is Singapore Telecoms. Yeah? They have their uh, call center in Malacca. Yeah? So every day, they need packed food of 150 staff working. So you just imagine 150 staff. So they tak nak yang mahal. And they, they are, oh, these are very stingy people. Uh, but they are nice. Lah, you know? We're not stingy. Lah. They are very cost conscious. Yeah? Marah pula if some, you know, someone related to Singtel hearing this. So they say, oh, can you package something that's about 10 ringgit uh, for lunch? Yeah. 
and maybe 10 ringgit 40, uh, uh, 8 ringgit 40. So if just 10 ringgit for lunch, for 150 people, that's what we need for a day. Yeah. And then additional for tea. So basically, that's how we survive during COVID. And sometimes, we, and, and we make more money during COVID compared to the normal process. So you have to know your cost structure, yeah, religiously, and how to make sure that you break even and all that. So your cost structure must must be very easy, and everyone would understand, you know. Uh, yeah. So in any organization, you have to tell your staff, uh, your electricity cannot go uh, beyond this. Uh, there's, there's something wrong. Uh, your raw materials cannot go above this. So there must be. Uh, everyone must be well informed, so everyone will take care of each other. Kita jaga kita when it comes to running a business, yeah. And then uh, organization uh, organization culture. I always believe in a very strict organization culture, discipline, professional. But at the same time, you're happy. It's not a zero sum game. Sometimes people think that if you're very strict, you won't be happy. Yeah, you can be strict and professional. You respect one another, but you can be very very happy because we feel that. If you do not, uh, uh, if you are not strict, you know, nanti orang akan make sure akan, I know your uh, product tak betul lah, you know, ada uh, apa, people, uh, uh, you don't treat your raw materials properly and all that, yeah. And finally, your organization must always be a learning organization, yeah. For our cafe, we from time to time, we introduce, I will be introducing new uh, recipe because I love to cook. So whenever I come back uh, 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 on holidays, that okay. Uh, right now I'm teaching the staff macam mana nak buat ice cream because that's the new business I'm going to venture in. Yeah, ice cream cempeda, ice cream durian. So I'm preparing it to make sure. Oh, this is not soft enough. Let's start. So we have been experimenting for the last one week since I'm in Malacca, and now we have this ice cream which we're going to launch very very soon, and I'm going to have a new brand. And this brand will be as great as Baskin Robbins one day. Yeah. So you must have vision. And I think our ice cream is uh, so now I will have to work with Pharma to make sure that I will have at least Cempedak paste for one year because Cempedak ini bermusim, durian pun bermusim. Eh? So how do I source this? So I'm planning for that. But my ice cream is, hmm, nanti Dr. Aila, you dapat ice cream I, eh? kalau I rajin buat dekat kucing. Yeah? Now, you have to have, take pride uh, of the project and also your brand. Who is your brand ambassador? You know, sometimes you don't need to spend thousands of uh, ringgit to have a beautiful actress or an actor, good looking actor to promote your products or services. Your brand ambassador is basically your staff. When your staff is happy, they'll great, put great stuff on their um, uh, social media and that's uh, your biggest uh, apa ni? Uh, advertis, uh, advertising, yeah, it's your staff. Jadi, okay. Uh, so those are the things uh, yang sangat penting as building blocks. Now I'm going to share with you something that I learned from Harvard Business Review. If we can go to the next slide, okay. And I do this religiously, yeah. Uh, I took it from Harvard Business Review. I uh, injected uh, some things. I tweak a little bit. Now, if you are a new CEO, katakala you're just being hired by an organization, if you're a new CEO, this is what you would want to do. And I've done this basically in TBS. And so far, Alhamdulillah, we are quite successful. And uh, 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 everyone said that we have uh, we provided the best Sarawak punya apa, pilihan raya negeri report yang sangat bagus. Dr. Ayla is one of them, our guest. Terima kasih kerana selalu datang. You know? And they said that very, very comprehensive. Yeah, never before. Like for example, kita introduce uh, apa, uh, kawasan uh, so and so. Uh, contohnya muara tuang. Huh? Um, so um, uh, we have an anchor in the studio. We talk about muara tuang. Uh, salah satu benda yang menjadi tarikan di muara tuang ialah uh, bujang senang. So we had a crocodile walking in the, the studio. Yeah, dan berpusing. You know, and then kalau dekat lawas ke, dekat limbang ke. Kita akan ada kerbau masuk dalam studio. Jadi kita gunakan 3D graphics. And uh, uh, what we did was people were people like that. So they saw 3D graphics in an election program. Normally election program is like about bas ke apa, bacaat ke paycaat apa, peratus undi, you know, sangat membosankan. Yeah? But we need to have that too. Yeah. But we attracted a different group of people, young people who are, who love to see, you know, our anchors. Kemana ada empurau swimming around the anchors. So it's a different thing altogether. So this is where apa, I implemented some of the things that I put in here. I'm going to share with you. Okay, number one, 
if you're a new CEO and uh, uh, you're hired by a company, uh, and it, this is also applicable if you're a startup, what do you do in the first 90 days? Yeah, the first 90 days you do this. Number one, set your business priorities. That's what I did when I first started. Set your business priorities. Apa you nak buat? What is TVS Java should be known for? First quarter, second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter, even monthly, even weekly. Yeah. Set incentive. How do you make sure that your staff, your team members will work very, very hard? Yeah. So there must be incentives. Yeah. Uh, people just don't work. Suka suka. Then I'm a pahala. But that kerja. No, not exactly true. Yeah. So they must have incentives. So you give them bonuses, ke, uh, additional, ke apa. and then of course all these things will have to align with board members. Yeah. So I have to present to the board, and also I have to present well to the team. So this is a strategy. How do you execute? Number one, you assess and build high performance team. One thing I realized when I started TBS, I said, oh my god, I have ninety percent young people. What am I going to do here? So you go and uh, do lots and lots of training, on-the-job training, and then you assess uh, different your capabilities. But one thing good, as I mentioned to you earlier, they have very good attitude, so it's good. And then uh, you execute what's a short, medium, and long-term targets. Targets can add there. What's the weekly target? So is this uh, this week kita dah target kita dah sampai ke dari segi viewership? Or if you are uh, doing business, dapat ke berapa banyak sponsorship? You know, um, uh, uh, kalau you buat sale. Sponsorship uh, week, and then like satu elas you secure early wins. Why do you need to secure early wins? Adalah you need to make sure people will believe in the system, in you as a leader, and in the team. Contohnya, uh, I think Sarawak Media Group buat record dalam Malaysia tak pernah wujud satu organisasi TV yang boleh go on air dalam masa dua bulan. You know, and we manage to do it. Walau bersakit jatuh macam nak gila lah. Uh, tapi when when I met with the CM, uh, uh, Datuk Patinggi, you know, uh, Abang Jo kata, uh, Cik Suhaimi, kita uh, kena make sure. So I met him in August because I reported to work. So I went to see him because he called. Kata, I think we can launch 10 hari bulan 10. 2020. Cantik. Uh, uh, so I I looked at uh, Datuk Yati, Datuk Nur Hayati, lah, our chairman. And uh, executive chairman and Chief Sarbini. So three of us came out of the meeting room. We just look at each other. We just smile and then we went in our cars. You know? So we had to think of the strategy how to launch a channel in two months, and we managed to do it. Yeah, August, September, October, November. The, 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 uh, October. We 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 launched it in October, and then that's basically the first early wins. And then after that, we have wins one. Uh, uh, minggu de, minggu uh, uh, bulan depan apa wins lagi? Come up with the next month. So you must have early wins. And then you see the behavior in the organization and you reward good behaviors because that will be part and parcel of your culture. That's how you develop culture in an organization, especially organization yang baru. Mana mana tak berapa bagus tu kita betulkan. Mana yang bagus tu kita celebrate. Yeah. Okay, this is the first 90 days. Can we go to the next slide? The next slide is the next 90 days. Yes. Slide yang seterus. Ah, Mrs. Suami. Yeah. Uh, students nak tanya tanya boleh ke? Eh, boleh, boleh, boleh. You can just interrupt okay. me anytime. Just interrupt. Guys, yeah, so welcome to us because yeah. along the way kan kita cakap yeah. pasal behavior. Mm. Um, Mrs. Suami talk about the role model of right behaviors. Yeah. So maybe if you need more elaboration ke apa something boleh. that really uh, interesting to you, so you can uh, just tanya saja. Okay. okay. Cool. Uh, so, I mean, you can take the whole day for us, no worry. Okay, what? I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. <laughs> uh, uh, do you guys have to leave after 11.30? No, 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 no. Okay. You're not tahan, Mrs. Suami. Huh? Okay. You're not tahan. Sampai bertang pun, you're okay ni. Okay. Okay. First, let's drag until pukul 12, eh? Uh, first, okay. uh, boleh, okay. boleh. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Then, I, I, then I don't have to rush through, yeah? Okay. okay. Then I can entertain more, okay? Uh, okay, let's go to the next slide. Uh, Okay, now we go to the next uh, next 90 days. Okay, next 90 days apa? Uh, I did this also, yeah? next 90 days. Kemudian, uh, kata design platforms and ecosystem. Because you dah tahu apa you nak buat. Yeah? Uh, once you launch the TV channel, macam for me in TVS, apa next? Uh? Apa platform yang kita nak buat? Apa ecosystem yang kita nak buat? So you have to have something in mind. So kita kata, okay. Uh, because kita dilanda COVID. Yeah? Kita dilanda COVID. At one time, we had to close our... Uh, our, our our channel because both floors do a dual floor kena covid i think at one time 20 of us kena covid at, at the same time yeah jadi so kita kena 
uh, invest in other things. So, kita punya engineers were very, very smart. They brought the green skin to the houses. So, kita look at our all our employees. Siapa rumah yang paling kuat, saya yang powerful sekali, uh, connectivity, internet, that house will transmit direct. So, kita direct daripada rumah budak tu. So, ada enam rumah yang kita pilih. Blah, 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 blah. So, we have to do that. Yeah. Kemudian, we need additional investment. So, we need to secure buy-ins from the board. The board supported us. So far, our board has been very, very kind to us. You know, because they know where we want to go. You know? So, uh, board pun kena main role juga dalam ni. And you have to know how to influence the board too. Yeah? And then, um, you need to champion the transformation. You know, For example, uh, master election, I was the project manager for the election. Yeah, uh, You kena pegang. Uh, if you're the leader, normally you don't micromanage. If you're the CEO, contohnya. For all CEOs, I would say you micromanage 30%. The other 70% you delegate. Yeah. So that's the, to me lah. You know, I, um, there's no wrong or uh, right or wrong answer for that. Yeah. But during election, 90% I pegang. Uh, when it comes to decision and moving forward, because ada masa-masa you kena jadi dictator. Ada kena masa-masanya you are, I know you allow people to participate. But for election, bam. Yeah. Election reporting you have to. So I, I I was the project manager for election. Yeah. Jadi based on the strategy, apa execution dia? Kita kena ada data strategy deployment. Data is so important. You know, dulu when we first when I first started in the industry, you kata okay lah, saya nak buat program macam lah lah. Okay, atau oh, saya nak buat program memasak lah. You know. So today you can't just do that. You kena make sure data you betul. Siapa yang nak menonton ni semua? You know. Uh, uh, are there enough people watching? Contohnya in TV3, they started this program called Nona. So they think Nona is uh, for uh, urban uh, women. Tetapi Nona was being watched by rural people. Orang urban tak ada masa nak pergi tengok Nona. They have other better things to do. But the rural people, they wanted to see apakah fashion-fashion terbaru yang orang-orang kat town pakai. Jadi bila dia keluar pergi town, nanti dia pergi big cities, dia tak adalah orang rasa dia macam ni tak trendy. You know? So they watch. Jadi because, sebab itulah Nona dibawakan kepada anda oleh apa minyak masak, cap pisau ke whatever lah. Yeah? Something that would appeal to the rural audience at that time lah when I first started. So masa tu kita teka-teka, kita tidak ada data. The only data that you have adalah berapa ramai orang um, menonton melalui Nielsen from Nielsen. Yeah? But today you have, you don't you know how many people watching you, dia kaya ke, dia berfikir pasal apa, dia suka cerita Indonesia ke, you have all kinds of data being bombarded dekat you. Yeah? So how do you use this? So you use data in your strategy development. So as a CEO, I always believe in if experience is important, intuition is important, uh, 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 you punya academic background is important, but the other 50% adalah data. You need this data. Yeah, data is king, no longer cash. Cash is not so king now. This data is king. Yeah, okay. And then you implement supporting system. You must have support system to make sure that um, uh, uh, contingency, business continuation, uh, whatever, business continuity, when your plan must be there. Yeah, and how to support should there should things go wrong, and also support staff. Yeah, sangat penting juga. Yeah, and then continuous improvement to the process. And this is where, bila you dah establish, you attract talent. And moving forward, you will realize that there's no such thing as full-time employment. Yeah, we are uh, macam SMG. We go on contract basis, especially the uh, apa, um, uh, higher post. Eh? Kita tak ada full-time staff sebab kalau kita bagi full-time, nanti orang akan jadi complacent. Then you tidak ada option untuk hire better people from outside. So when somebody is on contract, they will work very, very hard to make sure that their contracts will be renewed. So they will acquire new knowledge. They will make sure that, you know, they, uh, the, uh, uh, they are different breed like, altogether. Yeah. So uh, a good organization will be organizations yang boleh attract talent where people would love to work for that particular organization. This is the next 90 days. Okay, next slide is Lah 180 hari selepas itu. What do you do? Pertama, uh, you have to read the trends. Apakah disruptive technologies yang ada? Yeah? Identify the best supporting methodologies. What else can you do? It is all about improvement. 
for example, TVS now is all about improvement, content, uh, management, leadership is all about improving, improving, improving. Because you have the system there, you have the siapkan platform, you dah tahu audience is apa, is now macam mana nak go into new markets, macam mana nak jadi bagus, yeah? it's basically improvement. And then select and work on your wins. Yeah? For example, the other day I talked to, uh, I talked to my executive director, lah, either. look, either. during election, we drop everything. Kita ada Sarawak Disa, it's a hajar. And we thought our ratings will go down. No, ratings kita maintain. And at certain parts, ratings are lagi tinggi. What does that mean? That means there is an opportunity for the Sarawak Media Group melalui TVS untuk jadi a full-time news channel. News sahaja. Because it's proven. Yeah, it's proven during uh, Sarawak Media Election. For We started Sarawak Disa, it's about... Uh, a month and a half before election dan rating kita maintain maksudnya orang tak lari pun <coughs> jadi <coughs> you nampak situ win how do you fulfill ataupun how do you make use of that uh, information how do you perhaps work together uh, work uh, around that win and come up with better content better product so to me another opportunity is perhaps an election channel itu tanpa micro pula ya yeah? that, that, that is an option how do you execute? You transform the culture to focus on the future. In fact, what we have done now is we reward people not based on gaji. Normally, kita bagi orang tu gaji, this is your basic. Kemudian, you dapat lah, you know, macam traveling allowance ke, housing allowance lah, apa benda kan. Because benda tu is not measured based on your performance. So, sekarang, kita akan bagi you gaji uh, gaji pokok lah, panggil, gaji basic eh. Kemudian, on top of the gaji basic, kalau you pandai Excel, I bagi you RM50. Kalau you pandai PowerPoint, I bagi RM50. Kalau you pandai graphics, tambah lagi RM50. Jadi, it's based on your knowledge. So, uh, kalau ada new uh, technology, kalau you pandai technology tu, uh, because now it's basically graphics, technology, animation and all that, if you have that, we pay you more, we pay you more. Jadi, people are valued based on the quality of uh, content, a quality of uh, knowledge that they would bring to the organization. That's why we say, you have to transform the culture to focus on the future. That, kemudian, you stimulate internal innovation. Uh, we had an intern in our organization uh, last yesterday, no, two days ago was his last day, because they had further studies and about masters. Eh? Tapi budak intern ni develop kita punya internal dashboard. You just imagine how good this is. This is internal innovation. Yeah. So you must. Uh, so you you can do. Uh, you can buy, uh, you know, daripada luar. Tapi but when you have an intern yang boleh buat benda ni, first he was an intern and then we absorb him to become full-time staff. Yeah? And then because he wanted to do his master's, tapi we let him go lah. But then he will come back later on. Yeah? So stimulate internal innovation. And then we have external collaboration and partnership. Uh, sometimes you don't have to do things on your own. No need to reinvent the wheel. Get somebody to partner you. Yeah? For example, uh, if, you, if you're not good in, uh, uh, contohnya, uh, masa election, kita punya presentation, kita punya graphics cantik lah, you know, sangat cantik. Bukanlah nak masuk bakulang kat sini, memang cantik. Everybody kata cantik. Itu kita tak buat. So, kita ada, and uh, we collaborate with Pakar Vizarti. So, we just Pakar Vizarti datang, kita kata, okay, tukar-tukar-tukar ni masukkan. Yes, there was hiccup there, ada masalah sebelum tu, but uh, we collaborate and in that partnership, you come up with something new. Tak payah reinvent the wheel, get somebody who's good, you know. Because if you need to reinvent the wheel, by the time somebody else will come up with the solutions yeah and then you drive agile development kena cepat dan kena flexible yeah that is why it's easier uh, when you're a smaller organization bila you terlalu besar you jadi uh, sejenis dinosaur besar badan nak berpusing susah yeah when you're small you're nimble and you're agile yeah okay next next slide please our next slide. i thought i thought just now uh, ah. apa ni uh, dinosaur is rich um, no, fat people are rich, not dinosaur. <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Now, data and financial reporting. All leaders kena pandai numbers. Yeah, you cannot just rely on your accountants at top your GM. You must be good. Uh, uh, when I did my MBA in America, banyak ramai orang yang masuk tu. Uh, they are not business punya background, sama engineer, sama ni, but. Uh, uh, the way they taught these engineers adalah, you don't worry about, you know, accounting, accounting, tak payah worry. Learn how to read the data. Yeah? Contohnya, 
make sense of the data, ya, yeah? decide based on the data, metrics yang penting instead of nak belajar apa benda ni, uh, apa the, this ratio stands for what, you know, instead of memorizing everything, just go for the good ones. For me, I would go for return on investment. Everything is about ROI. Ya, yeah? satu. Kemudian you tengok staff turnover, apa turnover. So go for the different organization would have different metrics. But I contoh senang aja. If I want to buy programs from supply of programs at 15,000, how much money can I make through advertisement? So kalau I dapat 50, if I pay 15,000 for one episode of 30 minutes per week, then if I can make 150,000 from advertising, bagus. Berapa banyak I punya return on investment? Return on investment is basically, if you bagi satu ringgit, berapa ringgit you akan dapat pulangan? Kalau dapat empat ringgit, bagus. Kalau dapat seratus ringgit, lagi bagus. So, that's a matrix that you must know. Yeah? And then, uh, in, in, my, in any organization, you can add individual KPIs. You have a group KPI, tapi individual tu sangat penting. Because kalau tidak, uh, uh, mungkin organization tu ramai, yang buat kerja, seorang. Jadi, orang tu lah yang pernah. And, and in many organizations, kalau orang tu pandai, kita akan bagi dia je kerja. Dia rasa tak, tak bagi, kalau nanti tak jalan-jalan, dia jelah bagus. Eh? Sampai dia penat dan dia mati. You know? Jadi, it's bad. Yeah, jadi in any organization, every individual will play a role. Yeah, so we have different KPIs for different people, and you track weekly. We track weekly. We have weekly achievements. Yeah, so a weekly achievements are numbers, and we collect the numbers. Oh, kenapa ni? Kenapa ni? Kenapa ni? Berapa story you buat? Berapa story? So we have the numbers. Yeah. Okay. Next uh, slide. Kita celebrate monthly wins. Next slide. This is how we celebrate in TVS. Yes. Kita ada banyak sangat awards yang kita buat because kita track ya. Yeah? Every month kita akan bagi award ni. Award dia ni tak payah mahal-mahal kita bagi dia. Eh tapi dia suka juga ada keyboard baru lah, ada speaker lah. You know? So they get all kinds of ni and it's a good incentive. Contohnya every month kita akan ada uh, extra mile award. Apa extra mile award ni? Extra mile award is uh, an award that we give somebody dia punya kerja hakiki dia adalah ni tapi they do more. So we get extra mile. Kemudian Lean Award. Lean Award ni is um, you're given a budget of katakanlah 50,000 but you can accomplish something which is at about 45,000 tapi value dia lebih banyak. So kita bagi dia Lean Award contohnya. Kemudian Resourceful Award. Is it resourceful? Mata saya tak nampak. Kan resourceful right? Resourceful Award ni kalau you resourceful lah. You know? Macam contohnya uh, uh, um, if you apa instead of getting uh, uh, apa uh, raw material ataupun supplier pada satu orang, kenapa you tak dapat supplier-supplier lain lagi bagus? So, you're resourceful in that sense. How do you, you know, how do you work with other team members and people outside? Uh, how do you collaborate contohnya? Kita resourceful. Instead of kita mengajar budak-budak main band, kenapa kita tak bekerjasama saja dengan Sarawak punya? Sarawak is a very wonderful uh, symphony orchestra negeri Sarawak, Sans, you know. So, we are now work together dengan Sans. Ada ada hello, uh, you know. Um, Sans, can you work with us? Kita ada penyanyi nak nyanyi. You boleh mic? Boleh, you know. And uh, we can work with their budget. So that's basically resourceful. And then Sprinter Award. Kita kena buat kerja cepat, pantas. So Sprinter, lumba lari. Siapa yang bagus, kita bagi Sprinter Award. And then Viral Award, you know. It's important to have our content viral. So reporters yang dapat buat content shared by many people, yes, we give them award. Great Award adalah orang bekerja keras. Fail, 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 tapi at the end, perform. Ada Great Award. Kemudian ada Innovation Award, okay. Uh, and then Game Changer Award. And then uh, the SMG Core Value Award because kita kena ada core values that we celebrate. And also the CO Special Award. That one we give to people who would, you know, uh, do something that's very, very extraordinary. Yeah. Jadi, when they get this recognition, it's given every month. And people look forward, you know. People look forward to this one. And, uh, uh, and uh, it's very... This, they're emotional sedikit, you know, it's, oh, I'm so happy. And then they balik, you know, and then uh, they tunjuk kat mak dia, ambil gambar dengan mak dia semua. And it's really, really nice. Okay, so uh, when you have this kind of culture, it means that uh, there's something right about an organization. Yeah, and that brings me to the last uh, slide. Yay, Q&A. <laughs> I would love to anticipate anything. Of course, I, I have not covered a lot of other things, but I think this is the most important thing because when Dr. Ayla Kata does something about organizational leadership and challenges, to me, that is basically what I've shared with you is uh, basically uh, what I used uh, uh, from uh, uh, how I lead different, different teams yeah? uh, for, many, for many, many years. You know? I was a producer. I was a, uh, so, but most of the things I got summer. Cuma you have to tweak it too. 
apa sesuaikan dengan organisations that you lead lah basically. Okay. Now, any questions? I I would love to entertain questions. Okay, I want to shoot first on Mr. Swahimi. Sure, yeah, silakan. Uh, all right. Uh, okay, uh, you, the, the last part that you have uh, spoken just now is about what you call rewards, you know, incentive. Yeah. Yes, it's very, very important. Uh, but okay, just want to share a bit more deeper on your strategy of this particular monthly rewards, you know. Yeah. So when you do monthly rewards, for sure there will be, you know, there, there must be a system, I think, uh, uh, you you have uh make it quite easy for you to acknowledge or what you call to 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 uh, uh to tentukan sesiapa siapa yang sepatutnya the terima award tu. Yeah. But this one come with extra resources atau extra effort from uh, another 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 point mm. another entities. All right. So it will it will create uh kata -kata another job whereas you oh. somebody have to keep on looking who should be eligible to do to have this particular work to going to have this particular work you know mm. so there will be another extra task uh, to that particular person or that particular entity to acknowledge and then to to find uh, who should deserving to get that particular type of awards mm. satu yang keduanya pula alright if ever uh, uh, just just want to have a deeper deeper understanding if ever that you do uh, uh, things too frequently the prestige is being lost down the road you know so it become common things already so Good. how how do you see these type of things i love your question uh, in fact uh, uh, many people ask me these questions when i share what we do number one uh, you kata tadi that that is an extra work maybe a different team will have to look into it eh? that is why in any organization you can have a dashboard you must have a dashboard yang uh, yang apa yang menunjukkan department ini uh, apa that's, that is why I kata tadi kita punya KPI you can ada monthly KPIs weekly KPIs so what I've done okay in fact uh, cuti ni what I've done ialah I've, I've prepared for the whole year what will be the big events for the whole year how will TVS cover all these big events berapa kita punya target uh, ratings berapa kita punya target uh, apa, uh, revenue jadi uh, and uh, for example engineering akan buat apa the, the one department Okay, sales akan buat apa? Communication akan buat apa? Jadi it will all be reflected in the dashboard. You have the numbers. That is why I said data itu sangat penting. Yeah. Jadi when you have that data, so it is all reflected in there. You know, when you have the ratings, oh, uh, 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 this uh, program is doing well. Uh, then you, it's reflected on the producers. Uh, kenapa program ni uh, didn't do well? Maybe because it's not supported by communications. Corporate com maybe tak buat kerja. Yeah, you know. Then from there, corporate corporate character, how many ini you buat mana? So who are your target? Apa? So everything is in there. So bosses akan tengok pada dashboard tu satu. Kedua, uh, every week, uh, not every week, every month kita akan ada uh, human resource committee meeting. So this is where all the heads akan join together to decide uh, on who will win all these awards. Dan benda tu kita akan hantar beforehand. Yeah. Jadi beforehand, uh, macam two days before the meeting, uh, everybody akan dapat nama uh, apa? Uh, nama, uh, kenapa dia ni deserve that award ni? Then, uh, for, apa? so it's not actually extra work. So we normally would spend about less than half an hour to decide. Because we all know, we have the data, we have the dashboard satu. Ketua, you mentioned if it's too frequently, they akan hilang value. Now, you can make sure that apakah target untuk bulan ini? What is our main crusade for this month? Jadi, it is not about kita kena bagi every month. Kita kena tengok, okay. This month, macam the recent one, uh, the uh, the recent, uh, uh, sorry, uh, for January, uh, sorry, for uh, for no, uh, December dengan, sorry, November dengan December, uh, punya uh, award is based on election. That is the main title. How we cover the election. Jadi, setiap kali award tu akan ada something. Jadi, you have to plan for a year. What will be your crusade for this month? This month, apa kita punya project yang paling besar? Jadi, we award people based on that project rather than every month. Jadi, every month tu is basically the time yang kita bagilah. Tetapi, it's based on projects. Jadi, jadi it will not be seen as too frequent. Tapi, it's very project basis. Jadi, ada sebab dia. Not macam tiap hari dia type, satu hari dia type lebih. Jadi, kita bagi dia type is terbaik. Tak. You know, it's basically on project basis. Uh, jadi, jadi itu yang membuatkan macam hari... Uh, uh, for election, we even have to spread it over two months because we have people who are produ uh, uh, producing so well, you know. So we can okay, we carry apa, uh, kata, 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 uh, election one, one and election two. 
uh, mungkin uh, you know we, we have to carry some of them for the next month so okay boleh je yeah so that's how we do it lah so it, it you don't need an expert team that's part and parcel of evaluating weekly KPIs dan juga monthly KPIs you have to track so the numbers and data will help you in that decision lah uh, I love the question good question Cik Mi, yeah. I pula I pula nak tanya. Bila kangen. <laughs> nak belajar banyak daripada Cik Mi. Yeah, I mean, um, uh, I love the idea of using the uh, emotional attachment uh, yeah. from the apa ni award uh, giving uh, apa award the award recognition tu lah for the for the employee. Mm. So I see it as a, the way we strategize the behavioral shaping among yeah. our our employees, right? Tapi, uh, I'm I'm not sure if we are talking about uh, is it any difference if is we if we compare media and broadcasting industry because we see the nature of the industry itself like mm. broadcasting it is more on agility mm. uh, so we are not going more to perfection or whatever but mm. for the media we go for perfection so mm. it is like something a little bit uh per contradict dekat situ okay so. In terms of award recognition, because when we want to, because we are the strategists here, we want to to shape the behavior. Yeah. Either we go for perfection or we go for agility. Punya, uh, part two. Okay, you will never be perfect in whatever you do. But if you show something that you're working towards perfection and you're going that way, then you have to be awarded something because we award you based on your drive. You know, uh, I give an example. Uh, there was one employee who had uh, who who was quite problematic. Yeah, uh, dia macam lambat, you know. Uh, dia macam apa, disinterested and you know uh, macam loner lah. Yeah, basically. So then he he was not a team player. Tapi bila tiba elections, tiba tiba dia wow. Yeah? Uh, and they move. They're not perfect, tapi they what because they perhaps he's interested in the uh, uh, topics, you know. Uh, and he loved uh, politics perhaps so he worked very very hard then he from a problematic person yang kita can extend probation dia dapat special we gave him the special ceo award jadi and dia tidak perfect pun but when you show something uh, when you show to the team that you work hard and you work smart and you are uh, you are here to contribute something and it's a good attitude you reward the attitude more than the result you know because kalau kita award result saja you are you are missing the point because there's uh, there are some people who are macam kata kalau you buat sales ya yeah? contohnya and then orang ni dia ada banyak connection eh you sponsor ni dapat ni so dia akan dapat the figures because dia ada connection because dia mungkin anak orang kaya lah related somehow ya yeah? but if you have somebody who's not uh, born into a well connected family but if he or she works very very hard and we see that you know and then kita nampak dia walaupun dia incremental improvement so this is where IQ EQ kena masuk you know so that is why in fact for us kita kadang-kadang kita tak reward sangat IQ kita reward EQ more than anything else because I guess in any organization is the drive to perfection uh, that is what we should celebrate rather than uh, nak sampai KPI tu uh, macam contohnya I think for this year hari tu kita lepas election ni kita bawa budak pergi top spot to make sure ada pro, apa 100 orang first batch Seratus orang the next batch, okay? And this is just the first part. Nanti kita akan buat team building. Kita nak pergi lunduk lagi mana-mana, you know? To bring them because so that there's a camaraderie. Yeah, because everyone performed. And uh, uh, we feel that you uh, reward good behavior, not necessarily the numbers yang you achieve. But uh, as long as you show that you are getting there. So, yeah. So, that's how we do it lah. So, uh, tidak, uh, so we don't award perfection because tak ada keperluan di situ. Yeah? What good behavior? Assalamualaikum, Cik Suhaimi. Waalaikumsalam. Selamat tahun baru. Ya, yeah, selamat tahun baru. Uh, saya, Mazlan, saya ada dua soal, soalan yes, nak sambut. Dan mungkin minta uh, apa nama, how you manage this uh, uh, seperti yang saya tanya ni lah. The first thing is uh, anger management. Anger, okay. Okay, anger management. Okay, yang 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 make noise tu kita tahu lah, kita boleh eliminate dia. Uh, yang silent ni, how how you manage it? Okay. And then uh, the second one, 
I believe you as a CEO, when you work with a uh, government in the way, although it's a uh, secretary bodies, whatever, ataupun badan-badan kandun ke apa, uh, with a state government, one of your hand uh, being tied. So how you could so to make TVS grow or sustain? Okay. <laughs> I love that. Can I answer the second question first? Uh, yeah. Dulu I have the same uh, uh, pandangan lah. You know, if you work with the government, your hands are tied, sort of. Therefore, it's very difficult for you to become creative. But no, not necessarily, you know. Um, I work with uh, great people in the government, you know. Um, contohnya, I I work very well with Dato Dr. Sabaria Putit. Uh, I work very well with her. Uh, you know, uh, in the leadership and thing, and I work very well also with the chief minister's office. And in fact, you know, um, what's important is uh, kita kena saling inspire, menginspiring, if that's such a word. You know, in this world, when you inspire, people will gravitate towards you. Yeah. So for us in TVS, it's always about great ideas. You inspire others. In fact, that's why we use a. Uh, Menginspirasi dunimu as our tagline, yeah. So um, uh, let's kata kalau orang selalu kata kalau you bekerja dengan government ni, um, you menurut perintah dan sebagainya, you know. Tapi I think government love to be inspired, you know. If you show that uh, uh, this is where you want to go, this is where you want to go, and uh, they love, hey, this is very inspiring. Let's do this, yeah. So this is where uh, you get the buy-in. I think the word is buy-in more than anything else, yeah. So when you inspire somebody, tak kisahlah government ke, bukan government ke. When you inspire with great idea, when you show that this is how it's being done, when you kata, okay, this is return on investment. So secara tak langsung, you are inspiring people. Government ke tak government ke, when something is fun and create, you know. Uh, but then, for example, when we did a tribute to Piramli, yeah. So kita kita buat tari drama. So we invited everybody. So the TYT was there, uh, CM was there. You know, and uh, they loved it. So you inspire them in in such a way because it was ne never done in that sense. Kemudian dari segi apa uh, 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 election reporting, we did differently. So you inspire. So once you inspire, people will gravitate towards you, and it's easy for you to manage. Yeah, satu. Jadi in anything you do, tak kisahlah. To me, it's not about government or non-government. Kadang-kadang you think the government will will memenatkan you, uh, your hands are tight. Try working with uh, one of the richest men in this country. Uh, your hands are not only really tight, they will not give you money because then, hey, find your own money, finance your own, uh, uh, at least kerajaan Sarawak ni baik, bagi duit untuk kita start, you know. But once you work in a uh, private organisation, you have to find your own money to start anything. So I think it's how you impress, how you inspire people. Jadi orang akan tertawan dengan you punya charm, they will work with you. Satu. Yeah, you have to charm people. Kedua, uh, tadi you talk about anger management, the silent one. Yeah? Uh, in TVS, we realize that you know it's a it's a very uh, the, the media business is a very uh, stressful uh, environment. It's very stressful, not just the media, many other many other organizations juga agak stressful, and uh, kita kena accept the fact that when somebody sees a psychiatrist or a shrink, it is normal. Memang kita refer, kalau ada masalah, to talk to somebody, memang kita ada psychiatrist untuk di refer. Itu kalau, you know, if you nak manage anger ke, nak manage apa, memang kita refer. You know, because kadang-kadang orang tu dia tak nak cakap dengan kawan dia, dia tak nak cakap dengan mak dia lah, parents dia, because dia akan simpan, 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 dan tahu dia meletup. Because dia marah pada dunia, you know. Jadi what we have done is, okay, we notice this is going to happen, so if you need any help, you can talk to our psychiatrist ni dekat normah ke dekat mana ke so we actually refer satu itu kalau dia rasa dia perlu so that's one option and the other one is we do const, uh, apa, um, constant uh, training uh, to make sure that people will understand their relationship in a team ya yeah, itu kita buat and kita juga buat uh, walaupun tak boleh tak boleh buat team building because of covid dan sebagainya that's why we take people out for dinner or treat them in groups, you know, and we have a separate budget untuk just entertain budak-budak dalam group saja. Okay, you can take your staff out for coffee and the company will pay for it. Because once you open up, people will love that name. Jadi, itu secara tak langsung, dia akan, orang yang ada anger dalam diri dia akan sedikit terbuka dan dia akan, because anger ni is 
when you don't open up to people. Satu. Kedua, dia akan rasa tertekan. So when they feel that the work is shared by many, uh, is there. So jadi, whatever that we do is we we make sure that kita ada option-option situ untuk to lessen the impact. Because there are certain people dalam DNA dia memang garang. Ke bapak dia dulu berbengis, nenek dia berbengis, datuk dia berbengis, so bengis saja. Kau is pass in that, you know. Uh, because I keturunan bugis, jatuh, bugis takutlah orang bengis. Tak ada pun, I baik je. Uh, you know, I pun nice guy. You know? So it's not necessarily. But uh, sometimes it's in that trait. Yeah? It's passed through the DNA. So it could be that. But I think it's, uh, so kalau benda tu ada, then we treat it as and when, you know, kalau dia pembengis ke. So we help them. Jadi kalau dia ada trait tu, kita tak, I think, uh, kita panggil. Kita, we notice that you ni agak garang dan marah pada staff. Uh, in fact, we did that with one of our staff. Kita kata, okay, uh, yeah, because of that, we feel that, you know, maybe we can help you. If you feel that you need to say, okay, please, we can buat. We we panggil, kita panggil. Jadi, you need to address. Kadang-kadang, bosses takut nak address. Kadang-kadang, bosses takut staff. Dalam evaluation dan appraisal, kadang-kadang, bos tu bagi dia markah tinggi-tinggi-tinggi-tinggi sebab dia takut nanti staff tak buat kerja, dia panik nanti kan. Jadi, you have to be honest and you have to help your staff along the way. Yeah? Jadi, kita, uh, our staff memang jumpa uh, psychiatrist. Tak salah pun. Sunyi. You know, you need to talk to somebody you want to hantar je. And the company pays for it. Yeah? So that's how we manage anger. Hantar this training. We we do constant, you know, group. Kemudian if they need to say psychiatrist, kita hantar psychiatrist. You, that's professional help. Because anger management needs professional help. Yeah? So this is where you send to specialists. Because you may not have the capability to diagnose. So specialist, yes. Yeah? And jangan kisah dia gila. Jangan kata dia tu gila atau tak berapa betul ke tak because uh, maybe we are wired differently everybody is wired differently especially in the creative industry creative industry i manage creative people creative people are mad people if they are not mad then they cannot come up with creative stuff macam buat montaj tiba-tiba ada masuk ni ada keluar dinosaur orang orang bukan lah kata orang gila orang yang hmm macam tu lah you know? so you have to manage other parts yang that comes with it so this is where all things must come in handy. So managing creative people should be one of a, 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 a PhD on your subject, you know, because they are a different breed altogether. So you need to have a crazy person like me to manage uh, other groups of crazy people that are other anger dalam dan macam tu lah. So we get professionals to help them dalam anger yeah. management. Yeah, but yeah, uh, just like me, uh, I think. Uh... It's much easier in uh, in private uh, tire mm. and fire, mm. uh, but in government, uh, it's not that easy. Mm. In with what I see, I so see. Uh, usually uh, what what we sh we share uh, just to share with uh, the with you and the team here. Uh, in government scenario, uh, of course, uh, out of hundred percent, maybe ten to fifteen percent will be uh, not mm. with you, or maybe anger. Mm. This is silent anger. So, in order to sustain or grow, we forget about the ten percent. Yeah. We focus on the ninety yeah. percent and move forward. That is what how the government uh, agency doing. I just to share with that and I experience that. Uh, just I mean, thank you. Yeah, yeah, betul. I agree, Jeb Azlan. In fact, for us, uh, you you buy you bagi ten percent aja. Kita bagi. No, you lebih strict. Eh? You bagi ten percent. Kita twenty. Contohnya, uh, this is what we practice. Eh? Dalam anything. Especially in, a, in an evolving organization. For us, a media organization is very evolving. So, kita kata, in anything that we do, there will be the first 30% people yang akan terima idea kita. 30%. Ya? Kemudian, dia ada lagi 50% lalang. Lalang ni, kalau you berjaya, dia ikut you. Kalau you tak berjaya, ha, itulah, gatal sangat. Ha, you know? So, dia akan marah you balik. Then, dia ada 20% tu, dia akan marah, dia akan reject, dia akan diam suka hati. So, as a leader, what you do is, make sure that you juggle your 30%, and make sure that your 50% akan ikut the 30%, you are 80. The 20% ignore. You just ignore them because if not, I run a business. I have only 10 energy dalam satu hari. Adakah 10 energy I ini untuk 20% orang yang akan disrupt, uh, yang akan menyah, menyusah hidup I, ataupun I work on the 80% that I can bring. So, so it's basically managing energy. Managing energy ini, uh, nanti I dapat resource ni, I share dengan you. Because I learned managing energy when I was at CNN. Um, uh, they, they kata, okay, uh, there will always be 20% who will reject you outright. Because hidup dia memang banyak sangat kemarahan. So, just ignore. Macam you lebih strict, you, you kata 10%, for us 20%. Yeah? So, 
jaga your 30%, 50% akan be converted and kalau benda tu nampak successful, chances are the 20% yang memberontak tu akan ikut you juga. Berdoa lah ya. Uh, <laughs> betul, uh, betul. Betul, ya. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to prove that, ya. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Encik Suhaimi. Hi. Yeah. <coughs> I'm uh, very uh, interested in your talk and Thank you. especially in the media industry. <laughs> we are not yet that familiar with the media industry. Uh, I, I, I quote you just now, data is king, right? Uh, no more cash nowadays. I uh, just uh, want to know what is your, you know, when you have this creative industry, uh, media industry, you, you need to produce a lot of content, right? Mm -hmm. And then uh, how how do you ensure that what is, what is your your content strategy? What how do you ensure that your content will be accepted by the viewers? You know, do you have uh, agents down there to keep feedback you, or how how do you manage the the data? Okay, the evolving data, I keep you know, it is a mess of data that's coming to to ensure that you know your, your content is uh, interesting and okay, uh, getting more gathering more followers and. One. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I love that question. How do you make sure that whatever that you put uh, uh, will be acceptable? Uh, your content will be successful. Senang saja. Uh, sekarang ni, kalau you tengok lagu-lagu baru, if you listen to lagu-lagu baru, lagu-lagu baru yang akan successful tu, dia ada algoritm dia. Dia ada rentak-rentak tertentu yang akan diterima dan benda tu akan jadi successful. Ya? Yeah? That is the formula that's being used by K-pop. Kalau you dengar K-pop, you tak akan only later on bila dia the, bila keluar bahasa Korea dia baru eh ini lagu Korea sebenarnya. But you would think that lagu tu is an American song or a song that comes from London contohnya because the beat is very international. Ya. Yeah? Tetapi konten dia adalah Korea. Jadi dia ada local relevance that will appear to Korean. Tetapi it's relatable internationally. Jadi di TVS ataupun di mana-mana, when I was in Awani pun, I did, did, did the same thing. Kita kata, what is the local relevance? You have data for local relevance. Local relevance, you tengok apa program-program yang menjadi di Malaysia. Gegar Vaganza contohnya. You know, Maharaja Lawak contohnya. You know, and certain documentaries. Sarawakians suka documentaries. You know, kita ada ratings untuk the whole of Malaysia. Rating specifically untuk Sarawak, rating specifically untuk Sabah. Yeah? Sarawak scores very high in documentaries. They love documentaries. Yeah? Uh, 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 until at the point, okay, mana documentary kita untuk jadi, mana-mana data yang you dah ada, that's successful, keep it. Yeah? Maintain that market. Okay? Kemudian, uh, uh, we experimented. Yeah? Kita realise that salah satu growth area adalah program-program Hindustan lama. So we experimented with Bobby. Bobby ni zaman generation mak bapa ayah dulu. Kemudian an evening in Paris. Kita experiment. Boom! Rate kita naik. Jadi one thing you learn. And then kita tengok TV3 pun dulu. Dia buat uh, program apa? Uh, uh, Hindustan sebelum bulletin 130 during my time. Ya. Yeah? Ratings bulletin 130 tu lebih tinggi dari bulletin utama. Kerana apa? Kerana overflow of people yang menunggu uh, because dia apa 130 dia punya bulletin pukul 2 cerita Hindustan hari Sabtu ke hari Ahad ada Jadi orang menunggu jadi 10 minutes before pukul 2 dia dah masuk. Jadi it affected the ratings of bulletin 130 dan sponsors masuk towards the end part. Jadi Bulletin 130 terpaksa dipendekkan untuk masukkan uh, sebut pencuci harimau, uh, you know, uh, minyak cap pisau, semua ni sebab nak tangkap audiens yang nak tengok Hindustan. Jadi from there, we got the data. So for us, for this coming year, kita sekarang tengah mencari supply-supply Hindustan zaman-zaman dulu. Piramli, kita boleh repeat. Piramli, you repeat lah 10-40 kali, you will still get. Jadi data-data tu kita gunakan so we know this is successful, this is successful, this is successful. Another thing we learn that from the data ialah lagi pendek bulletin berita tu lagi tinggi ratings dia. That's why you tengok ke bulletin-bulletin kita 15 minit, 15 minit, 15 minit. Jadi dia lebih tinggi. 
So this data kita letak and at the same time we have a group of people who studies apakah trend around the world. Korea buat apa? Uh, you know, um, Indonesia buat apa? What are the new films coming out of Hollywood? So kita dapat from there kita nampak trends. So you have a data, you marry with trend, everything is scientific. Jadi with that data, 50%, lagi 50% based on your experience, your your gut feel dan sebagainya, this is where you come in. Jadi decision making as a leader uh, is not just about apa you rasa orang nak tetapi based on figures, numbers, data yang you ada. So this is why I kata this is data generation. Jadi based on this data kita akan tahu apa program yang uh, uh, eventually akan menarik. Contohnya when we first started ada satu program called Rezeki Air. It's a local production. Uh, so that's the awat buat. Eh? Kemudian kita kata okay kau buatlah rezeki apa lepas ni? Rezeki tanah, rezeki api, rezeki udara and successful sebab dia maintain elemen-elemen yang sama ya yeah? jadi and then there's, there's a producer in Sabah dia buat Borneoan stories ya yeah? tentang apa alat-alat uh, music you know di di, di Sabah uh, and it, it berjaya juga ya huh? Sarawak pun suka sebab dia bentuk documentary ya yeah? and then when we did Piramli Zoom ya huh? Kemudian kita bila isu-isu uh, kalau, kalau penyanyi-penyanyi, contohnya uh, we experimented. Uh, anything in Iban will do quite well, uh, ratings wise. Yeah? So uh, uh, kita panggil artis Iban untuk present news because kita the news kita news pukul 8 sampai 8.35. 8.35 sampai 8.45, 10 minit, kita akan jemput artis untuk membaca berita tentang community, tentang apa inovasi tentang because it's a light thing ya yeah? uh, bukan politics bukan business tak bila Melissa Francis uh, bila all this iban punya entertainer zoom tinggi you punya you punya tu so, jadi they love to see uh, artis-artis iban jadi for the aha we need iban content jadi itulah data yang kita gunakan ya yeah? so uh, i think Almost 60% based on data tried and tested. Lagi 40 kita eksperimen. So that's how we make sure that content kita berjaya. Yes, I mean. Yeah. Related to that question, uh, yeah. I don't know whether you uh, ataupun uh, maybe my 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 perception. Yeah. Mm. Uh, successful of uh, TV3 media mm. premier in uh, bulletin jam 8 mm. masa tu is uh, one zeleha. Mm. Okay, are you, do you agree with me or not? Or is it still relevant uh, using that strategy now? Okay. Okay. <laughs> just, uh, just, just okay. Uh, dalam dunia business, sometimes it's good to be first in mind. You know, in fact, dalam dalam advertising, this is first in mind strategy, meaning you are the first to introduce something, and uh, yeah, people always remember the top three brands. Yeah, kalau so, uh, kalau uh, apa? Kalau apa ni? Uh, soft drinks, you remember Pepsi, you remember Coke, lagi satu apa? Seven up mungkin. Yeah? But if you tanya top two, Coke or Pepsi? Yeah? Because they are the first to be, because they are, bukanlah they are the first to be in the market, but they are the first to go and advertise aggressively and people remember the brand. Yeah? Now, semasa TV3 keluar, TV3 taklah bagus macam mana pun. Cuma TV3 was better than RTM pada masa tu. Tak ada competition. Yeah? ATM masih dengan cara lama tiba-tiba TV3 keluarkan jeli tawan jeli tawan not just rasa uh, not, not just one uh, one Zaliha ada Azza Aziz Fauzi, Salina Azman dan sebagainya yeah? Jadi TV3 uh, being remembered as ranca apa uh, channel wanita wanita cantik menyampaikan berita dan juga program pada masa tu. Jadi but the but the apa ni uh, branding tu sticks in the mind of the people which is very difficult. Contohnya, I was born by TV3. I baca kat Awani ke, I baca kat mana, oh, so I made TV3. Sampai hari ni, uh, orang datang rasa, oh, so I made TV3. No, I Awani lagi terror pada TV3 lah. Masa TV3 tu, I bodoh. Bila I masuk Awani, I pandai. They don't remember saya yang pandai dalam Awani. They remember saya yang membaca berita di TV3 because the branding was very, very strong. Ya? Yeah? Jadi, jadi it's basically first in mind. So, Encik Mazlan, I think it's the first in mind strategy and I think TV3 did that very well. Jadi dan dalam dunia penyiaran ni, dunia penyiaran ni unfair sebenarnya tau. Uh, sangat sangat tak adil sebab dia suka tengok yang cantik. You know, yang cantik berbanding yang pandai. So this is the dilemma 
that I have to make sure that I have to kill to make sure that kita kena cari yang pandai pandai cantik macam Dr. Aila pandai cantik dua ah uh, ini so, jadi kita kena introducekan dua ni sebab kalau pandai semata-mata susah nak jalan so there must be macam kek lah you know kek tu kalau tak sedap pun tapi kalau icing dia cantik budak-budak nak makan you know apa uh, macam tu lah so itu yang unfair a little bit lah in the uh, broadcasting industry but the strategy that was used by TV3 was first in mind pada masa tu so they decided to win dalam edge tu lah yeah? Thank you. Uh, apa ni, uh, Cik Mi, kalau yeah. uh, we talking about the mind strategy kan, yeah. because uh, we want to, ni more to strategies lah. So, we we forget about uh, apa yang pandai ke, yang cantik. <laughs> Tapi, uh, what is important now, kalau kreatif, dia akan nampak cantik lah, will be mm. acceptable and sustainable. Mm. Um, But uh, talking about creative industry, we managing creative people. Tadi pun the first question uh, in the management banyak yang kreatif ni gila whatsoever lah kan dia dia ada dia punya keperluan sendiri lah kalau tak dia yeah. tak, tak akan berjaya kan. So how what is the strategy actually to to retain this crazy crazy smart people. Right. Tapi yeah. dia dia berjaya, dia ada something. As compared yeah. to kalau yang patuh saja, dia memang tak bukan troublemaker lah kan. Tapi yeah. dia tak tak gila, dia tak ada specialty dekat situ. I, if you give me a choice, uh, whether to have somebody who's nice, uh, disciplined versus somebody who will bring in great value tapi ada sedikit problem. Tapi kalau dia tambah banyak problem, I have to let this person go. Kalau dia mengacau culture, and the rest they will have to go yeah but kita allow certain kegilaan yang mengacau tapi tak banyak sangat yeah jadi how to make sure that you retain them number satu it can be monetary yeah uh, mungkin bagi salary yang tinggi tapi tak semua orang perlukan salary yang tinggi tapi contohnya when i was in uh, when when i was in astro uh, uh, i was retained um, because uh, the group Uh, CEO at that time, Datuk Rohana Rosan, she thought I was super duper good lah. Dia rasa I pandai lah, tapi I rasa I tak pandai, I comel je. Uh, you know, so, 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 what the, the retention strategy was, dia, dia tahu I love to read, I love to go and learn new things. Yeah. So, you know, instead of just paying me bonus, dia akan hantar I, that's why she sent me to CNN. I berkursus di CNN. Kemudian dia hantar I ke Korea to learn new things in Korea. Kemudian dihantar I pergi all these conferences dan juga award dekat Thailand to learn how Thai boleh come up with great advertisement. Kalau you tengok advertisement Thailand, memang gila babi best. You know? So, so salah satu cara untuk retain people lah satu, it can be cash incentive. But then cash incentive, you have to get permission from the board. Kadang-kadang so the board, eh, tak bolehlah uh, tinggi-tinggi sangat. You know? It can be non-monetary. Walaupun monetary in that sense, eh, you hantar orang kepada satu organisation or attachment yang will not cost you so much or you send on to education punya trip so your punya budget for training is basically attachment in Thailand ke dua bulan ke you know so so those are the things so in order to retain people cash and also other non-monetary incentives ketiga uh, give them projects that they will like doing and uh, it will be beneficial for the organization dan ketiga make them internal mentors kadang-kadang dia orang ni uh, would love to share with other people too and maybe work in the team so there are lots of ways for us it is both uh, contohnya uh, uh, this month january end of this month kita akan hantar tiga orang staff kita yang did very very well masa election untuk attachment dengan astro awani selama satu bulan so to learn how uh, macam mana astro awani boleh manage satu uh, you know satu hari punya Uh, content by just selecting three topics saja untuk hari itu. So we send. So and they love. They are looking forward to it. Uh, and then after kita bond lah dia. Aku dah hantar kau pergi kan. So kau tak boleh nak quit dalam masa tiga tahun kan. So that's your bond. Uh, jadi you know you have to. Tak bolehlah baik sangat. So kena juga ada pengikat you know. You know? So, so we just talking about strategi kan. This yeah. is uh, orang kata contemporary strategy that yeah. we have to yeah. look at lah. Yeah. So we send them for attachment and they love attachments actually. Yeah. And then contohnya, uh, companies would love to, uh, macam oil companies, kemudian dia will invite media to see how they work, you know, send them, uh, uh, dua hari bersama Abang Bomber, boleh, why not, you know, uh, 
Ah panjatlah dengan abang bomba. Pergilah host macam mana abang bomba menyelamatkan kucing dia pada atas pokok buat. And they love that. And they they can write stories. So those are the kind of things that keep people because number satu you identify. Kedua you train, ya. Yeah? Uh, kemudian you retain. So penting strategi-strategi tu. Any other question, guys? Hello, Alang -alang Encik Faimi. Ah, Nick. Ah, yes. Ah, uh, hi, Encik Faimi. Hi. Uh, thank you for uh, sharing uh, just now. Very uh, impressive. Uh, sangat. Okay. Atau apa? Um, uh, kita sebab kita dalam kelas kadang-kadang we learn about theory, theory, theory. Tapi this time around we can actually, you know. Uh, see how it is adaptable to the real life situation lah. Uh, saya uh, actually sharing apa yang Cik Suami cakap tadi tu pasal uh, pro, pro, it's not problematic stuff lah because uh, right now uh, in my organization I lead about uh, 90 staff overall and uh, I just joined the organization uh, a couple of months back and uh, the word that has been used is uh, problematic staff tapi uh, as how i see it maybe the staff was put in the position where they did not enjoy uh, doing what they do so uh, what i try to do is uh, try to see what are their strengths lah. and not just that kadang -kadang a bit of uh, as leaders a bit of restructuring uh, yes. can be done because uh, we have some sort of authority lah. so when we restructure and then what i notice is that the staff actually performing uh, very well because for example i have this one senior officer uh, she is uh, she katorang apa um, i was told that uh, she has been long in the organization tapi they attach ke other department cannot work along with other people so eventually she was in my department and uh, even uh, she was attached with one uh, pembantu tadbe yang paling bersabar pun that pembantu tadbe told me she wanted to change uh, unit so kalau orang paling bersabar pun tak boleh bersabar so that is another level lah so then i was thinking uh, Maybe what can be done is actually to to harness uh, this person's uh, strengths. Menanya. So what I did was I noticed that uh, she is very good in in things that is like uh, markom lah. So I I I proposed to her I want to move you to handle branding and markom of my division is something new. So actually she got excited and I told her, but most probably you will be. Uh, uh, apa, independent lah then she said tak ada masalah but I love this job so this is one of the way I solve the problem lah meaning to say that it doesn't necessarily dia ada orang membantu dia uh, because she she being perfectionist she has trust issues with people uh, but at the same time uh, I give her what she likes so it's a win-win situation for everyone so I think as a leader we need to how to say stuff solve this kind of uh, organizational problem creatively uh, mm -hmm. uh, i mean kalau macam dulu before i became a leader you know as a staff uh, i think all of us here pernah jadi staff dulu we all started as staff kan kita punya mindset is like uh, why not just you know transfer orang tu ke apa ke tapi as leader now we are in the position of leader uh, it's, it's harder than it is it actually is you yeah. know so then uh, but rather taking the easy way out i think we need to solve it uh, very creatively and uh, end of the day when you harness everybody's uh, strength uh, actually nobody loses yeah. yeah so macam tu lah just just a bit sharing lah of my personal experience lah uh, yes I, co congratulations in fact uh, that's that's basically what we are supposed to do provided organization kita ni quite flexible because kadang-kadang organization structure kita salah when i join uh, tvs yeah the, the, the original, uh, walaupun dia baru, the original uh, structure dia, layer after layer after layer after layer. When I was in Bernama, uh, apa, dia punya organization structure, uh, structure dia ada layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, layer 4, sampai 8 layers, you know. So at the end of the day, yang buat kerja, yang bawah sekali, yang atas tu boleh minum kopi, boleh minum, you know. So uh, in order to get accountability adalah you flatten the organization cut. Satu, you know. Kedua, you look at the talent. That is basically what you did. I think you did wonderfully. 
uh, uh, let me also share uh, my experience in my organization. Um, apa ni, uh, we also had somebody uh, uh, where we, because mula-mula dia nak cari kerja, anything pun boleh. So dia ambil lah kerja apa pun dia apply. Okay, dapat kerja tu dia masuk. But then they are not suited to that particular job because their strengths adalah somewhere else. So when we transfer that person to a different department, budak tu shine bagus, terus dapat uh, CEO award. Sebab uh, kita, uh, banyak organisation, we put people in org- traditional uh, jobs that we feel that this is what the job should be, you know. But when uh, your environment is changing dengan banyak disruption dan sebagainya, you know, how can you be a, dis- a positive disruption to the industry Therefore, you have to look at, you have to be very, very creative to position your people to do things differently, but results dia akan, uh, apa, uh, akan menukar organisation. So, so, contohnya, there was one, uh, uh, if you watch TVS, ada satu presenter dan juga reporter nama dia, Fabright James. Fabright James ni, masa dia masuk, dia jaga dekat uh, control panel kat dalam television. Dia ketuk ni lah, dia buat character generation, dia tap, 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 tap. Sangat membosankan. So, dia tengok je presenter-presenter baca ni. I think dalam otak dia, dia kata, ya eh, aku lagi bagus daripada presenter-presenter semua lah. So, he got his guy kata, Cik Mi, boleh tak saya pindah? Saya pandai IBAN, saya pandai English, saya pandai BM. Saya boleh file tiga stories dekat IBAN desk, BM desk, English desk and I also can present. So, I kata, why not? Masuklah. So, and then he presented and then dia file story bagus. Budak ni boleh menulis. Fabric James dia pandai. Kemudian hantar dia luar. Dia boleh buat live cross and then dia boleh buat live, you know. So, there you go. Kita yang letak dia, we sign over them into uh, dalam organisation chart kita which just happen to be vacant. Sebab dia ada degree, therefore dia qualify. Sebab dia pandai cakap masa uh, masa interview, kita letak di situ. Dia tak suka pun uh, kerja tu tapi he needed a job then. You know? Jadi, bila dia masuk, kita kena make sure kita evaluate orang tu. So, that is why for us, kita ada you know masuk uh, the first three months, uh, uh, there's an appraisal untuk confirmation. Kemudian three months, kita evaluate lagi. So, kalau boleh, every quarter kita kena evaluate orang and then kita tengok strength kita dekat mana. I agree with you totally. That's what all leaders must do. Because kalau tidak, orang tu tiba-tiba dia pension, dia buat kerja yang dia tak suka, padahal kerja yang dia suka is done by somebody else who's not as productive as this person. So, we have to know how uh, orang perform. Jadi, this is where leaders tu, dia kena ada EQ yang hebat, you know. Uh, orang semua kata IQ, IQ, IQ. I, I'm not into IQ. Uh, so sorry, I'm into EQ altogether. Because if you are leading an organization, EQ you zap, you're gonna, you know. So I think this is where I think existing leaders can relearn. Kalau dia tak hebat dalam EQ, I'm always for EQ because kita manage manusia. Manusia ni macam-macam jenis perasaan, you know. Uh, macam I, I sekarang ni tengah belajar macam mana nak apa? Uh, menternak kambing, um, bull kambing, apa, janapari, you know. And I realised that kambing ni ada perasaan, <laughs> you know. So, this is how you have to handle this kambing. And, and then, uh, affectionate. And then, kambing tu datang, dia boleh tahu it's you, you know. So, kalau kambing ada perasaan, <laughs> manusia lagi lah, you know. So, it has to be quarterly done. For us, it's quarterly. Quarterly, 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 you know. And, uh, and uh, from interaction, uh, as leaders, uh, gone are the days, dulu orang kata, oh tak boleh keluar bos-bos, minum dengan bos-bos. Uh, second boss, minum dengan second-second boss. Uh, uh, apa, uh, interns makan dengan interns, tak. In our organisation, uh, in fact, uh, I learned that in, uh, in, in Astro. In Astro, they call it macam, uh, apa? Uh, they call it the roti canai session. So, the group uh, CEO, Datuk Rohana Rosan, akan cakap dengan HR, okay, pick at random, satu intern, satu staff, satu assistant vice president, satu president, Makan roti canai sangat uh, dengan dia dan notis tu uh, diberi dalam masa dua hari. So dia kah main makan roti canai. So from there, the group CEO akan evaluate macam mana budak ni bercakap, macam mana cara dia melihat dunia, how dia fit into the organisation, macam mana dia boleh describe dia punya kerja dalam organisation tu. Dan sekiranya the staff did badly, the staff tu will not be uh, tidak akan uh, diapa-apakan. Tapi the boss akan kena panggil kenapa staff engkau ni tak pandai, you know. So the the mistake here adalah boss ni tak mengajar anak buah dia menjadi hebat. So for me in my organisation, I have to make sure that my subordinates are smarter than me, so that when I go on leave, I don't have problems because the 
organization is run by great people and my succession planning senang. I know who to reward. Jadi, this is where uh, apa, uh, the culture change should come in. Yeah. Jadi, then you dapat tahu, oh, ini we manage perasaan orang, you tahu dia strength kat mana and get the people to speak up. Because only when they speak up, you know that they're interested in jobs which are which we have given them. Tapi dia tak nak, tapi dia nak kerja lain, boleh. You know? So so that's how we should be lah. You know? uh, I I applaud that. I think Encik Nick, they has, they have done a wonderful job as a leader. Congratulations. Okay, uh, Cik Mi. Uh, yeah. Sorry, panggil Cik Mi dah. <laughs> okay, apa ni? Um, Talking about inspiring tadi kan, uh, yeah. I think it is related lah. Uh, the job of being a leader, dia bukan semata-mata nak diagnose internally yeah. in, ter in terms of the development of our staff. Macam yeah. uh, macam Cik Imi cakap tadi, quarterly, uh, we diagnose the development from the trend kan, yang uh, external yeah. punya, uh, that one is more to data, is the thing. Yeah. And then, uh, uh, we 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 emphasize more not not for perfection it's more on the learning in agility yeah, yeah. and uh the the words inspiring tadi yang i think uh, uh quite related to our uh yeah. discussion ni it's like mengajar orang lain which is our staff to be hebat lebih macam lebih pandai from mm. the previous one um that one is like multiplying effect lah untuk yeah. The being a leader tu dia bukan kita sahaja yang hebat we manage to make other people which is our our staff or our our employee to they they can explore more from their own talent kan because mm -hmm. talent is not um not enough being being yes. good and that, that that is part of our our challenge lah juga kan being inspiring to mm. make, to make others become better kan mm. So I guess, uh, okay, this one, eh? uh, when, I, when, I was, when I was first hired uh, by Sarawak Media Group to be the CEO of Sarawak Media Group, uh, by the board of directors hired me. So I, dalam hati, as a CEO, this is the first question that I have in mind. I kata, mesti orang tu semua nak test pandai ke suami Sulaiman ni? Hebat sangat ke that we have to fly him all the way ke Kuching? Hebat sangat ke dia? So I said, aha, they must be thinking that, okay? So I said, I have to show to them that I ni sangat hebat. So, so what I've done is I believe in leading by example. Okay, uh, ni, I uh, I lead a, a broadcast. Uh, bukan saja broadcast. We also do apa, uh, news on digital. I would prepare the script. I can prepare apa, FPC fixed point chart. You know, macam mana strategy programming, macam mana strategy business. I have all the blueprints. I siapkan semua. Macam sekarang ni, uh, my map ni, my map untuk semua, I siapkan untuk semua orang. This is it. Jadi, you have to show how it's done. Satu, but you're not micromanaging. You are showing how it's done. Because people always believe a leader who understands and who knows how to do it rather than leader yang mengarah, mengarah, mengarah tapi ini yang tak tahu. You know? So, I have to prove to them that, oh, okay lah, worth it lah bayar dia gaji banyak ni. Okay? Taklah banyak mana pun. So, banyaklah juga. So, <laughs> so, so you, uh, that's a pressure for me. But for me, I think I have to do this to show to my subordinates that this is how it's done. I've done it before. I will lead all of you to where we want to go. So, you have to believe in me. A leader must be trusted and believed by the staff. Dia, orang dia bawa. Jadi, I kena tunjuk benda tu. I siapkan script. I bought edit. I bought voice over. I bought macam mana. This is how we're going to present it. I've done it before. So believe me. So this is how we do it. So it's always leading by example because when you lead by example, you inspire them. Once they are inspired, they will follow you. Yeah? Jadi kita tak boleh mengarah-mengarah. You know? uh, it's always better to get somebody who understands the business. Yeah? Jadi uh, katakanlah you tiba-tiba you di parachutekan uh, pergi uh, buat satu uh, to lead a business organization which is not related to what you do. There's a challenge there. Tetapi I think what you can do is show them how certain things which is important to that organization is done. Why this one will bring apa uh, apa uh, big value to the organization and how would you do it differently? And bagaimana benda ni boleh increase revenue contohnya and then bagaimana dia akan strengthen the brand once you prove it and and share with them 
they will be inspired by your initiative. Jadi benda tu kena ada. Uh, you have to be trusted. You have to uh, show and is leading by example. Only then you will inspire others lah. You know. When when I first started, I bought script semua. Promo script I bought, business script I bought, lagu pun I bought, format pun I bought, semua I bought. Because they thought, ah, they thought, oh, you know what semua ke? Yes, because I want you to trust me. Because when, if you don't trust me, therefore, you will not be inspired to do the work. So now, I get it. And then, once it's done, I get it. Now, the challenge is, you do better than me. So in meetings, I get it. Okay, this is my idea. Prove my idea wrong. I will reward you for it. Jadi, budak-budak tu akan berfikir macam mana nak mengalahkan bos punya idea. You know, oh, kalau bos kata macam ni, okay. Oh, I rasa kita buat macam ni. Ah, I like that idea. Okay, forget about my idea. I think yours is better. So as a leader, we must come to that uh, level yang kita kata, eh, your idea is better than mine. Let's go with yours. Okay, it does not make you look bad as a leader. You spark the idea, yeah, then get them to come in. So dia akan ada rasa sense of ownership. You know, they have their sense of ownership, so they add to it. Oh, I'm okay with it. Tapi kalau benda tu tak elok, you jangkatlah tak elok. You know, uh, and then what would be a better solution? So, a leader kena get people to disagree with dia punya, dia punya ni, so that from that brainstorm uh, session, you come up with a better solution and better product that you can sell lah. I practice that in my organization because I rasa that's the only way to move. I can see that it is more on active part uh, uh, active engagement yep. not only for uh, the employee it's for the uh, for the leader yeah. himself so dia kena uh, active engagement dengan orang dia hmm. bukan employee yang kena uh, apa kena take initiative nak engage dengan dia dia yang uh, apa yeah. uh, tuas sekali that within the process to dia initiate that betul Lepas contohnya masa election, I kata, okay, anak macam ni, macam ni, macam ni. So, dia kata, eh, Cik B, kalau kita buat macam ni, lagi lah cantik. Lepas ya, yeah, I kata, tapi, I perlukan laptop kat dalam ni. Dia kata, tak, benda tu akan susah. Kata, oh, oh, I think you have a point. Okay, tukar I punya idea, pakai I punya idea. So, that's how it tapi, works. Ha. Don't you think, I mean, sorry, it's more to kita learning, eh? <laughs> Apa? Yeah, yeah. Learning flow. Uh, don't you think it will be uh, applicable untuk certain orang with uh, kind of traits yang dia degree of openness dia tinggi atau atau dia semua leader sepatut macam tu semua leader sepatut macam tu because i rasa even seorang dictator pun perlu open uh, you know i think i'm a dictator i think i am you know? yeah, yeah but but i am a nice dictator dia ada dua dictator baik dictator um, uh, dan open i'm a dictator i know exactly where to take okay? this is what i dah tu apa But then I'm open. If you think that uh, this is better, we go. Jadi, I rasa semua leaders kena open because kalau tidak, you know, especially when you go into uh, era post-pandemic. Yeah? Post-pandemic ni is a very challenging era. Ada banyak benda kita kena ubah, kita kena tweak. Yeah? Maybe that this is why more heads better than one CEO punya head. You know? Jadi, from there, you allow others to uh, come up with the ideas. And maybe because macam in my case, maybe I'm too long in this industry that I can't see things from an outsider's point of view. So I have to be very, very open. So I thought, okay, come with a great idea. And I think I need to reward them for that great idea. Jadi, all leaders should be open. Tak dia ada dua. Satu, they allow different ideas to come in. Kedua, you synthesize idea tu, pilih yang bagus. Kemudian, get buy-in from the people. Kemudian, set timeline untuk benda ni, set KPI, macam mana kita nak measure kita punya sukses, and then lead. Jadi, barulah betul. Kita tak bolehlah bagi terlampau demokrasi, in the end ni tak boleh kawal, you know. Dia, dia kena elements of control kena ada, uh, elements of innovation kena ada, elements of uh, teamwork kena ada kat situ, dan how do you measure. Measuring ni sangat penting, sangat penting. Banyak organisations fail, sebab dia tak measure. Dia tak measure, dia tak tahu bila dia successful, bila dia tak successful. Ya? Jadi benda tu perlu ada lah. You know? There must be somebody yang kerja dia measure saja. You know, uh, okay, well, I think there's a measurement for that. There's a measurement, measurement for this. Ya? Uh, in, in, uh, so, ini, yeah. Saya rasa uh, the most challenging thing uh, to the leaders is uh, to fight their only goals. This, oh, <laughs> itu yes. yang saya kebanyakan yang, yang kita nampak. I, <laughs> Cik Mazda, I agree with you and that's why uh, leader yang ada banyak ego tu nanti dia akan satu hari dia akan suffer from downfall yang sangat teruk. I give you an example. Eh? Ada satu army general. Tak nak cakap nama. Uh, army general tu is a, 
uh, you, he used to come to my show when I was in Awani. Kemudian Amir Janul tu, uh, dia dah retired. And then, tiba-tiba dia tak ada orang yang polish kasut dia. Dia tak ada orang yang, uh, dia kata, dia, dia kata, uh, Cik Mi, can I talk to you as a friend? Ya, yeah, kenapa? Today I feel so depressed. I think I was so bad when I was a general. Kenapa? Because I was so bad to my people, because of my power and my ego. Hari ni I suffered because saya tak tahu macam mana nak isi minyak dalam tank kereta. <laughs> dia tak tahu buat benda tu because it was always done by people. You know, up to that point. And he suffered, you know, and he suffered mentally and then I had to take him out and bawa dia minum dan, you know, dan sebagainya. And then later on he recovered. And after that he became the nicest person on earth. You know, because dia tak tahu nak isi minyak kat kereta. What do I do next? Nak bayar kat mana? You know? And that affected him because his ego was so powerful. I know all. Tapi satu hari dia tak tahu macam mana nak isi minyak. Jadi, Improvement banyak macam saya ni. But huh? in private lah. Private mungkin senang lah. Kalau dia gitu, kita hire je lah. Ataupun kita replace. But not in government agency. Saya nampak banyak sangat in government agency. When they become the leader tu, sebelum dapat tu semua okay. Bila dah dapat tu, uh, ego tu semua nampak. Kau Itulah macam masalah macam sebenarnya. Macam tu kita kena berdoa je lah. Ya lah, kena berdoa je lah. Raja sharing je lah macam saya ni. Ya, yeah, yeah, faham. Untuk orang, ego tu penting. Tetapi, ego tu kena di manage well lah. Dia macam anger management, ego management tu penting. Dia kena jaga. Ya, you know? uh, yeah. yeah. and uh, and always believe in uh, one day, uh, I always believe in Uh, why I'm quite successful in business is because quite successful. I'm not a millionaire, but I'm quite successful in in in, in my career all this while. Is because I think I treat people nicely. Uh, because along the way, the same people that you must you naik yeah you naik dalam organisation, uh, you strict. Tapi you buy and fair. You must be strict at the same time you fair and you nice yeah naik. Tapi bila you turun nanti, it's the same people that will help you along the way. You know, my staff lah jadi I punya supplier, my staff lah tolong buat ni, my former staff. So along the way, they help you back, you know. So, satu being nice, Cik Mi. Satu huh? lagi, I think you do it everything on your own. That's the thing, that's yes. the key. Uh, you, you kalau kita you know. come back to our discussion yeah. just now, kan? Kalau kita buat semua sendiri, I mean mm. we know what to do on our own, mm. uh, dia dah tak jadi ego. Kalau yang ego ni bila kita tak tak buat sendiri lah kot. Tak, saya rasa ego ni is basically yang kita kena manage dia dalam DNA. Kalau dia kata bapak ada duit ego, dah tu dia pun ego ni, ni dia pun ego. Dia macam anger juga lah tadi bengis. Ya, yeah, yeah, yeah. dia dalam DNA. Tapi it's how we manage it lah, you know. It's, it's, the, uh, living a life is about managing the good and the bad in us, you know. Uh, jadi, try to be the best version of you lah, you know. And kadang-kadang, tapi uh, tadi uh, Encik Mazlan ada macam dia kata, certain organisations tu, you tak boleh buat apa lah, you know. Tapi saya rasa, You can tame certain egos by inspiring them. I've done it many times, you know. Ada kalanya orang tu dia rasa dia je lah paling pandai buat ni, dia lah paling pandai buat ni. And then you masuk, you rasa, eh, aku pandai macam ni. Tapi you do it a different way. And orang tu, eh, okay ni, you know. And then dia jadi baik because they are inspired by the way you do things. Boleh. Tapi agak uh, mencabar lah, you know? mencabar juga. Tetapi it's not impossible. Saya uh, rasa bukan saja doa sebab kalau doa pun kena tawakal lah. You kena berusaha, lepas tu baru berdoa. Not just doa kan. So, uh, elemen tu ada tawakal dengan doa. So, you tawakal, you work first lah. You know? So, I think it's uh, in, once you inspire people with lots of ego, I've done it before. You know, I managed to change orang tu. Dan, when I left that organisation, that person actually asked me back. I tu orang government. <laughs> asked me back to collaborate dengan dia dalam some consultancy work and it worked. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it took some time, but I think it, it is worth the effort, yeah. But do it with, with all good intentions, lah, you know. I always believe in anything you do in life, it must be done with good intentions, satu. Niat you kena betul. Kalau betul niat you, betul execution. You betul strategy, betul lah jadinya. You know, uh, nothing can go wrong, yeah. But if you do something with all the bad intention, you know, it will, uh, it, uh, you will suffer most from benda tu later on. So, I, 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 then in life, it's always easier to be good. Uh, nak jadi jahat ni susah. Uh, so, you kena jahat. Pertama, kena cover line, dia kena cover line. Pertama, you penat, dia pun lupa which line to cover, you mati sendiri. And to be nice is easier, you know. You can smile and that makes you younger lah. That's sad. 
the the the, the reason macam mana uh, that is the petua macam mana uh, Mrs Suhami <coughs> uh, awet muda eh hey, mesti sebab you kena you kena happy lah you know I, I, apa problems will come masalah akan datang TV industry life mistakes akan happen all the time people akan marah you kan but then you take it in your stride lah you know you can oh, okay uh, well how do we improve from there so that's how it should be rather than mau ada clock itu salah tu you salah tu you salah tu oh, tak boleh you know because like, okay let's see make the isolate problem ni problem ni apa ah uh, jadi how do we improve so it's always about constant improvement and you do it nicely and orang yang buat salah tu they will feel so bad tak payahlah pukul lagi sampai dia termasuk dalam tanah ke no you know, they would want to improve too so it's okay and ni kita dah tahu ni kesalahan ni i think okay how do we improve from that so just uh, and they will make sure that you know they nak redeem balik you know Ah, uh, jangan macam itulah unless dia memang Jadi, bersama. Sustainability strategy lah kan uh, Cik Mi. Betul. That's how you sustain uh, organisasi tu. Takkan you nak fire dia because dia ada the best knowledge. Perfection won't, won't last kan. Dia kalau kalau kita go for perfection in future pun kita kita suffer lah. So take it as a learning punya. Yes. You will never be perfect you know. Wah oh, gitu. Apa ni? Okay, talking. Uh, last question I hope from me. Uh, yang from the other students tu tak tahu lagi. Boleh. Uh, talking about the quality tadi kan uh, we are talking about improvement uh, talking about quality so uh, at, tadi cik mi ada cakap pasal elements of control kat situ how yeah. actually in in broadcasting and media industry how do you relate this with uh, with the uh, acceptable threshold kan kadang-kadang kita 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 takut kita tersasar sangat ke then you said cannot be tapi be nice tapi uh, so dia ada acceptable threshold kat situ i think maybe you can elaborate more on that okay uh, control ni they are basically um uh, you cannot be too free and you cannot be too tight you know jadi it, it is on a continuum okay here's katalah here's to loose and here terlalu tight so you have to work uh, kiri ke kanan kiri ke kanan di mana ada keperluan contohnya Not everything can have the approval I as a CEO dalam organisation. Tapi there are certain things yang sangat-sangat crucial that you know I will have the to to trigger you need you need my uh, apa, uh, approval. Jadi from there you learn along the way. So you list kan lah. Here are the kind of things that you would want apa ni uh, apa di mana ada control tu. Dan control tu, to me, is uh, basically must be understood by heads of department. Don't, eh? Jadi heads of department must know what exactly do you want to control, what exactly yang uh, lebih relax dan sebagainya. Eh? Jadi uh, over the years ataupun over the few months that, you, that, that we work together in a team contohnya, then you know apa yang top priority. Because kita tak boleh katakanlah dalam satu organisation tu, ada 10 Uh, projects that you do uh, at one go. You have to remember that they are uh, most important. I always believe in 30%. The first 30% is yang, yang sangat crucial. This is where the full control can ada. So the other 70% perhaps less. Because you can, you can, the manusia ni ada ada energy. I always kata 10 energy dalam satu hari. Yeah? Macam mana not to be tired. Uh, you don't tire yourself. Yeah? So you focus on mana-mana yang you boleh control, then the rest tu you can delegate, yeah. Jadi controlling is also about delegating, delegating to your generals who can do well. Dan nak pilih general ni pun kena betul juga. Ada general yang jahat, ada general yang tak berapa pandai. Ya? So you kena pilih. Jadi uh, and you cannot be like-minded juga. Jadi somebody who shares the same value. So I always believe that a good leader must be able to delegate well. Bila you boleh delegate, uh, control is also about delegating. Delegating tu control sebenarnya. Yeah? Jadi control tu, uh, apa? you control through the people that you delegate. Jadi it, 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 uh, uh, energy you boleh focus on 20% atau 30% to bring the organization to a different level, yang lebih tinggi, yang lebih bagus. Jadi 70% tu you dah delegate kepada generals-generals yang boleh control dia punya various departments atau various projects. That's how you move projects. Because um, when I first started uh, TVS, ada banyak projek inilah yang inilah inilah. Jadi senang saja, okay? I look at the big picture, but I focus on news, okay? 
uh, creative content uh, orang lain jaga ni jaga-jaga but I will come in on a weekly basis jadi you akan tahu mana you boleh control cepat bila control tu kita kata bukan control semata-mata I kata I can control untuk 2 bulan later on the next person yang I punya uh, I'll, be, I'll be mentoring somebody so orang mentee tu will be able to carry it after 2 months so everything kena ada timeline dia because kalau tidak sampai ke sudah you jadi control and then nothing gets done so bila you tak ada bam the whole thing will just collapse so succession planning you out everything you out jadi documenting uh, measuring is so important in any leader so you kena measure measuring ni sangat penting so, sebab data tu penting dashboard you penting so kalau lah satu hari ada dashboard tentang ni tekan apa performance orang bam ni 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 tekan uh, revenue ni 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 tekan siapa competitor ni jadi dashboard tu sangat penting untuk leader so every week you kena based on that dashboard barulah meeting tu bagus eh okey Okay, last question please. Ada tak? Kalau tak, kita bergambar. Susah nak bergambar dengan uh, Mrs. Wahimi ni. This one, Encik Wahimi. Murphy. Yeah. Ya. Ha. Saya pun ada question juga. Ya, boleh, ah, boleh, boleh, boleh. Encik Wahimi. Okay, boleh tanya Encik Wahimi ya? Hmm. Ah. I want to ask uh, Mr. Wahimi that it seems uh, to study a lot and observe a lot from uh, on leadership skills. Uh -huh. So, who is the good leader in your view? no matter you work with or interviewed or know from afar okay uh, actually i always believe in never put your apa jangan kita jangan uh, what was the word eh? menyukai seorang tu berlebih-lebihan nanti satu hari you akan discover certain apa faults ke ya yeah? Uh, dalam benda dalam diri dia you akan rasa sangat kecewa you know uh, tetapi you learn great things from different different people you know uh, to me uh, i get my strength from being inspired by many many different personalities but if you ask me who's a good leader there's one person that i really admire who's no longer in the corporate world uh, dia sekarang ni buat benda-benda uh, sendiri dia lebih buat dia, dia punya almost yes i can't nama dia Datuk Rohana Rozhan. Google dia, dia sangat cantik perempuan ni. Sangat cantik. She was the group uh, CEO of Astro. Yeah? She was my mentor. Dia adalah seorang accountant yang sangat pandai, seorang strategi yang sangat bagus. She speaks well, sangat cantik. Uh, she's so beautiful. I was, I was so much in love with her because dia, dia uh, as a mentor, somebody who would push you and the mentor you sangat cantik. Uh, you know, and uh, and uh, and you know, most of the time I dengar, say, oh, sorry, I wasn't hearing. You were so beautiful. You are so beautiful. Nah, you know, jadi macam uh, itulah. And then and after uh, I left uh, Astro first, and after that she left, and uh, she would uh, always invite me to her house. You know, I also mentor anak dia. Anak dia pun going to business Rizal. You know, so we become good friends. You know, so I always believe it. Uh, dalam dalam dunia pekerjaan, it is not just about Uh, you work and after that you go back. You can maintain a very long friendship, you know, with a, a good boss. So, like, yeah, so Rana Rosan was, uh, there was also uh, you know, a, a gentleman called Yunus Said who introduced me to the world of uh, uh, apa ni, uh, journalism. Yeah. So, dia uh, mengajar saya macam mana menjadi reporter yang bagus. So, along the way, you have many leaders that will inspire you. So, you just pick Uh, uh, and and also celebrate their imperfections. Tidak ada manusia yang perfect dalam dunia. And then and then you get okay. Dia ada imperfections dia. Why not? You know. So just celebrate whatever yang dia buat bagus. Uh, so I to me if if there's if there's one person kalau you nak satu nama, namanya Datuk Rohana Rosan. Google dia lepas ni. You will fall in love with her. She's so beautiful. Uh, sangat cantik orangnya. Thank you, Encik Saimi. Assalamualaikum. Google dah Google. Google salam. Siapa ni? Sawardi ni, kat video. Okay, yes. Yeah. Okay, yes. Okay, itu saya ni. Ya. Thank you lah kena sharing tadi. Punya, saya rasa kita banyak belajar new things lah. Especially on leadership. Oh. Tadi, saya dengar, because uh, this is a simple question. As you mentioned earlier, you you only sleep when people sleep. When other people sleep. You only sleep when other people sleep. Hmm. So, apa maksudnya? Apa dia? You ah? Uh? You only, we only sleep. When, when other people sleep. Tidur? Uh, 
Ah, tidur berapa jam? Tidur sehari tu. Uh, Kalau di KL, uh, tak, tak tidur saya rasa di KL tu. You, uh, the older you get, you, oh itu je soalannya? Tak, ada satu soalan lagi. <laughs> soalan dia macam ni. Uh, dia tanya soalan bila tidur je, Cik Mi. Uh, okay, saya, lagi, lagi. saya tanya satu soalan. Because you are as a leader lah. Ataupun CEO of PDM. So, did you apa, inculcate this culture to your staff? Yeah. And if, if yes, uh, what uh, the reaction from your staff? Apa dia? Okay, cool. Alright, uh, soalan pertama, uh, you don't need so much sleep in your life. Uh, I normally tidur pukul 1, I will be up by 5. You know, uh, because lagi lagi you tua, lagi less amount of sleep you need actually. Uh, you know, so I dah tua dah, I dah 60 tahun. Uh, you know, walaupun I kelihatan macam 38 macam tu lah. Uh, you know, so you don't sleep much. Uh, kedua, uh, you don't force people to follow your style of leadership. You cannot force anybody. Different people will have different styles, yeah? Tapi pada I ialah, you show them how it's done. So it's all up to them. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, because I always feel that you inspire and uh, you cannot control. Ada benda you boleh control dalam hidup ini. You boleh control ni. But there's uh, people you can't control the way they think, the way they do things. But you can impart certain skills that they can use. And hopefully you, they use it well lah, you know. Macam my staff, uh, they, I think they're okay with me, you know, they're okay. Kalau ada masalah, they will just come to my office. My office, if you ask my secretary, uh, okay, um, uh, I have a wonderful secretary, uh, he's a gentleman, nama dia Afizal. Uh, uh, Afizal ni membuatkan air gemuk sebab dia tahu all the best restaurants in Kuching, damn. Uh, you know, uh, uh, the, okay, uh, but, but, uh, uh, my office, uh, Afizal lah kata, cik mi depan ni warna ni, warna ni, warna eh banyaknya. Uh, and most of them will come to uh, uh, will come to me on certain things which are not which is not related to work, which is perfectly fine. You know, it's about growth, it's about getting education, whether they're about MBA, ke tidak, masa they're about PhD, ke tidak, things like that. You know, uh, and then kata, I want to live there. Uh, should I study in UK? Jadi it's about growth. You know, jadi when people come to you, because normally you don't see your boss kata you not quit. Are you crazy? You know, you saying you know. Because most of these people will come to me and say, macam mana I want to grow? Which I think is a great thing. Yeah, because uh, dalam dunia ni, uh, mungkin you live an organization, but later on you meet this person in a, in, a, in a different organization. Jadi along the way, you help people grow and the industry will benefit uh, secara tak langsung lah, you know. So I think uh, when you can help people to grow, that's the best thing that you can do. So in fact, I would advise, uh, macam I advise my staff the other day, I I think it's also a good, uh, I kata, you sekarang ni single, you muda, you nak pergi belajar. Why all means belajar? Tapi dia takut bila balik nanti tak ada kerja. Okay? I rasa senang aja. You pergi, you berhenti kerja. Kalau you adalah seorang satu brand yang sangat power, you pergi ke universiti yang sangat power, you punya research work sangat power, nobody will not hire you. Satu. Tapi kedua, can you think of also to be an entrepreneur just in case you cannot get employment, can you have, can you start a business with minimal funds? Consultancy contohnya kan? So, there are two options. Jadi hidup kita tak adalah kita nak mencari kerja saja for the rest of our lives. You boleh jadi consultant, you boleh buat kerja ni, you boleh buat kerja ni. Jadi, dalam dunia ni ada banyak options. Macam contohnya, I run for businesses. I'm okay. Lepas ni, anak jadi so, lepas ni, nama bukan suami selamat. Lepas ni, suami kambing. You know, because I'll be an expert in kambing. So, I mean ice cream. It's fine because I think I love ice cream and that could be the next success. You know, so it's uh, it's about growth. If you uh, if you leave something, do not be worried about it. Macam the other day, ada staff I from Awani. Datang all the way dengan mak bapak dia just to advice. Uh, he's a famous brand in Awani. So, dia berhenti. Dia nak belajar kat London. Okay? Dia nak belajar apa, uh, dia nak buat masters dekat London. So, I kata, Look, I thought, if you're in London, London, you're not a master, you go to the BBC. Learn new things. And then, back, everyone will take you because you're a consultant, because you were in BBC. You know? So, sometimes, people don't see how you build your brand. Manusia ni, dia kena ada brand, okay? What's your brand? So, ask yourself this question. Dr. Ayla dulu, kan? What's your brand, Dr. Ayla? So, what's your brand? So, you have to, uh, apa? so, I check out with Budak Tintra ni. Once you uh, kerja kat BBC, you balik kat Malaysia, semua orang nak hire you because you went to a good university. Yeah, you went, uh, you were work, you, you worked for a, a, a great uh, broadcasting organisation. 
and you yourself is a strong brand. Kenapa you nak pergi kerja dengan orang? You jadi consultant lah. You buka IMEA Consultancy sendiri. The money is in consultancy work. Okay? Yes, ha. Huh? Thank you. Ya, yeah, jawab soalan you tak tadi? Ha, jawab kan? Ha, saya tak, 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 tak tahu dah. Kau apa jam tidur tadi? <laughs> Uh, I tak tidur. I tidur pukul 1, I baru bangun pukul 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, 4 jam cukup lah. Betul, cukup. Okay. Ada question lagi tak? Any question? Okay. Ya, saya nak cakap macam mana ni. Uh, yes. Okay, Cik Saimi. Uh, uh, I think Mem Hani want to ask some question. Mem, uh, kita mau nanya soalan ke, Mem? No, eh? Ah, saya dah, saya dah. Saya dah. Okay, alright. Ah, uh, Cik Suhani, alright. Yeah. Uh, I, I have a few job here lah. Actually, uh, one of the thing is kambing. If you're talking about kambing, kita kat Sarawak is food and mouth free disease. I have a food and mouth free disease zone. So, kalau nak menternak kambing, Sarawak will be a very good place for you to to do lah. Uh, if ever, alright. I love it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> At this, uh, we we are this zone. Uh, so, uh, food and mouth disease uh, free zone. And then mm. to another point, uh, ego is actually the main en enemy of uh, good leadership. Yeah. All right. So there's one thing. Right. Uh, can say that. Right? And then uh, my question, uh, this one, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, this one contract basis. Uh, I'm trying to uh, to ask uh, basically this the, the, the to the point that you said uh, earlier. Yeah. Uh, environment, but a happy environment. Satu. Yeah. Yang kedua nya pula, uh, and then uh, you. Uh, mm -hmm. I just want to understand what is your strategy and what is uh, to understand how you what you call face all the challenges in imply in impl implementing this particular strategy mm. to make your organization strict but a happy for your environment uh, and then to to that particular note okay mm. uh, you the, the the strategy that tbs is using is by using contractual mm. and then uh, we know that uh, a lot of people that uh, yang yang nak design dalam mana mana organization the first people that usually go first is actually the people which is marketable the people mm -hmm. it's not marketable is actually the one they're going to stay in that particular organization all right so your strategy is by implementing what you call a contract basis does do you think that it will give uh, some sort of like uh, what you call uh, scenarios ataupun perception ataupun feelings uh, they are not what you call uh, kata orang uh, tak tak kata orang tak safe right? okay right. i love this question uh, 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 when i left tv3 uh, I started my consultancy work um, uh, and I do lots of programming work uh, for two tahun, okay? And then Astro telephone I, kita, uh, Cik Suami, we're going to start a 24-7 channel called Astro Awani. Would you want to be part of it? Uh, then what, what capacity will I be coming in as? The executive producer. Okay, fine. Executive producer is a very high-ranking job. Lah. So they offer I a permanent post, uh, which is a full-time staff. You know what I did? I said, I don't want a permanent post. I want a contract. I want a one plus one contract. Can you do it for me? So that this is the very first time somebody is asking for a contract rather than a permanent post. So they gave me a fix, uh, they call it a fixed term contract. A fixed term contract is basically a contract. Let's say I work for satu, katakanlah dua, dua tahun. Tapi all the perks, everything sama dengan uh, uh, permanent staff. Tetapi gaji dia based on negotiation. So, I negotiated my salary. So, I said I want one plus one, I don't want two. So, one. So, so to me, what's important here is uh, untuk orang, so the, the thinking must change. Yeah? Orang semua nak kerja permanent-permanent. In many parts of the world, uh, anything above, because dalam dunia ni ada associate, senior associate, uh, kemudian ada AVP, uh, assistant vice president, vice president and above, normally, Vice President and above tu adalah uh, Vice President, Executive Vice President itu adalah contract. Yeah, kadang-kadang Assistant Vice President pun contract. Yeah, jadi the thinking must change. Apa yang perlu bertukar ialah pergi jadi contract staff. You know, I nak uh, so dia tu why would you want to be a contract staff? It's simple. Let me just be frank with you. So I told the HR person, you know why I want to be on contract? I'm going to prove to you that I'm so good that it will never let me go. And when I demand a higher salary, you will pay me that salary because I'm worth every single cent, dollars, ringgit. And they just shocked them, oh, okay, let's do this. And I did. And then after when they renewed my contract, the jump in my salary was so tinggi because they valued me as a somebody who 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 delivered what, what they wanted to, you know. 
Jadi, I think the thinking must change. Jadi, kalau ada peluang, I will tell people, jadilah pekerja kontrak because you can demand. You know? Jadi, bila you're so confident of what you do, you know, and normally, kontrak ni, uh, you don't hire people who work for, who's looking for a job. You only hire people who already, uh, people who dah, dah ada kerja. People with jobs are normally the good ones because people who are not hired may not be good. Itu, this is uh, not always true lah, tapi selalunya betul. Yeah? Jadi, how do you hire people yang yang dah ada kerja? So, you kata kat dia, okay, I give you a two-year contract and this is the salary. Macam, I memang one plus one. I one plus one dekat TVS. I, I love this. That you can demand. Hmm. Jadi, the thinking must change. Yeah, the thinking must change. Uh, apa? Uh, and um, uh, in fact, I actually propose uh, that uh, my, my, in many organizations, except for government, you know, uh, because that's why I deal with mostly uh, business uh, uh, private sector. In Astro, uh, bila you buat yearly appraisal, uh, contohnya, you akan ada the top uh, 8%. This is uh, you bagi bonus 9 bulan contohnya. ya. Kemudian the next uh, quartal, quartal-quartal. Tapi ada 8% yang paling bawah sekali. So the 8% you have to let go. Or sometimes 10%, 10%. You tell them, okay, I'm giving you 3 months salary, go away. Because you are a non-performer. So that is how a, a, a good organization perlu survive. Macam tu. ya. Yeah? Jadi, semua orang yang on contract, uh, the top ones. And they love to be on contract because it's the negotiation yang bagus. You know, I love my contract. So, kalau I tunjuk you kat contract, I mesti wah, wow, you know. <laughs> uh, so, we have to change. We have to change. Okay, that one is from the perception of the employee. Okay, uh. from the perception of the employer and the retention in the strategy. Uh. That particular what we call contract basis, uh, whereas we want to start, uh, retain the good people. Uh, mm. is a good approach or not in terms of the perception of uh, the employee's part, retention in the strategy. Okay, uh, normally the employee will understand. The employee will, okay, uh, you don't go into a contract if the value of uh, salary to tak tinggi, tapi the contract then I think it's a lousy job. I mean, it's a lousy deal, not a lousy job. It's a lousy deal. So if you want to go into contract, then the contract must be super duper good. It's a different deal altogether. Contract ni untuk a specialist. Yeah? Sekiranya itu pekerjaan biasa, then they're on contract, I think don't go work for that organization yeah jadi i always believe in in, in a in a good organization they will hire specialists or a pakar they they then they for the contract would work and um, for retention purposes it's not on the contract it is about projects and it's about uh, uh contohnya if you have completed this project kalau project ni uh, bagus dalam category a you will have two months bonus lagi Kemudian, go to the next project. Kalau ni ada tiga bulan bonus, dah baguslah bagus. Jadi, dia boleh bekerja, kata katalah projek ni will bring in revenue yang 400 kali ganda. Then, the, the amount is taken from that to bayar dia punya bonus. Jadi, it, it is not just about the time, it's about uh, apa perks yang ada sebalik itulah. You know, and also dalam kontrak tu kata, if you've done well, we'll send you for attachment. It's fine because when you bring uh, balik, dia tambah lagi. Dia kata, okay, we bond you for another three months. I think it's a good deal. So it has to be a wonderful contract. Contract itu kena cantik lah. Yeah. Jadi for them, that's how uh, you can faham macam mana they look at uh, pada dia orang, retention strategy sangat berbeza untuk people who are on contract. Orang on contract ni normally expect. Eh? Uh, uh, in, in Astro, they take a lot of expats from uh, Europe, from Australia from India, and uh, the package is just so good that you wouldn't want to be a permanent staff at all. Uh, yeah, so, so things must change. I think a lot of education, I think kita kena ada conference lah banyak. So I think this one, IDEX could touch later on, you know, and, and so that people appreciate contracts more than permanent, uh, that more than full-time staff. And, uh, and retention is how creative the contract can be. I agree with that one, Antisani, because as you said, but then it's a biased thinking, you know? Yeah. Biased thinking, you know? Oh, contract is no good. No, no. Is biased thinking, just like 
a biased thinking of you know somebody which is in the media industry have to be beautiful. So basically, yes. it's about thinking, and right? Okay, uh, okay. So since you touch on the subject, uh, kita boleh habis buku satu boleh kan? Ada lima belas minit. I want to talk about beauty ni kan? Okay. Uh, kalau siapa-siapa nak balik, kita balik. Kalau tak apa. <laughs> Okay, so uh, jadi uh, beauty, okay, dulu beauty, kenapa ada beauty sebab you nak numbers, bila tinggi rating, lagi banyak sponsorship, uh, you, tapi uh, there's also niche, you know, niche ni penting, you know, contohnya, I don't look at cantik ke apa, tapi I nak orang yang berfikir, ya, yeah? dalam dunia ni orang berfikir ni kurang berbanding dengan orang yang suka kecantikan yang fluff, apa, fluff, jadi, Uh, orang berfikir normally about 20% of the population perhaps so 20% 20% orang berfikir ni chances are successful people ya yeah? successful people ni akan appeal kepada siapa kepada CIMB kepada Maybank kepada credit card companies ya yeah? jadi i give you an example dulu when i was in TV3 i started a very lousy program nama dia money matters they still have money matters today uh, yeah? it was so lousy it was so bad i even tak suka program ni And program tu mendapat sponsorship yang tinggi dari uh, was it Mercedes Benz? I think it was BMW. Kemudian masa tu bank uh, was it, I think it's bank uh, uh, one of the banks. Uh, I forgot which bank. So ane tanya balik. Uh, eh rating kita teruk lah. Rating kita tak sampai pun twenty five Why are people sponsoring? Senang saja. You tahu siapa yang menonton Money Matters ni tak? Yang menonton Money, Man Money Matters ni adalah Uh, pengusaha-pengusaha Bumi Putra yang baru berjinak-jinak dalam bidang bisnes jadi dia nak tengok, uh, dia nak belajar sesuatu yang baru so the corporate players tak menonton Money Matters ni jadi uh, untuk uh, apa ni um, uh, apa entrepreneurs Bumi Putra ini especially orang Melayu ma maaf ya, kalau orang Melayu tu singgol, saya orang Melayu uh, ok Uh, mereka bila dia beli bisnes, the first thing dia akan beli, dia akan beli BMW. Dia akan beli kereta mewah supaya nampak macam kelas kan. Oleh itu, BMW sponsor. And I thought it's only for one season. And after that, they continued. Maksudnya memang ramai lah untuk produk Melayu ni beli BMW dulu se sebelum, sebelum bisnes dia berjaya. You know, so it worked for them. Jadi itulah niche. You know, jadi di situ... Uh, it doesn't matter. Dulu we talk about beauty. Sekarang kita talk about intelligence dan niche juga. Jadi ada niche. Kemudian, uh, uh, if it's a very serious business program, uh, yang for the corporate people to, you know, uh, opinion leaders lah kata kan, then you get all the credit card companies coming in. You know, all the travel companies, the airlines will come in, contohnya kan. Uh, so macam contohnya Channel News Asia. Channel News Asia, Uh, the big airlines masuk because they think that whoever watches Channel News Asia, are chances that they are traveling or they are watching this from their hotel rooms, kan? Jadi ada market-market tertentu. But if you ask me for the numbers, numbers dia sangat low. Dia tak tinggi. Tetapi yang menonton adalah quality audience. Jadi quality audience ada banyak duit. Banyak duit maka orang-orang apa uh, brands yang related to banyak duit akan sponsor. Macam tu lah. Uh, jadi, jadi it's, uh, it's okay. Dulu semua kena cantik. Sekarang tak payah cantik pun okey. Tapi kena manis. Ha, you know? Presentable. Yeah? Okay, done? Eh? Okay, ada. Dah, dah habis aku. Ada lagi ke? Kesian Mr. Suami. I tak apa. I don't know. I don't know. I boleh order je makanan. We all lah. <laughs> Semua dah, dah habis ke? ke ada lagi last lah kalau ada pun last lah this one boleh tak ada je nampak okey <laughs> kalau tak ada saya ambil satu lagi okey uh, just waiting for all my friend and uh, uh, colleague uh, to to ya yeah. uh, just this one a bit a bit a bit i don't know if ever that you don't want to answer you never mind lah jangan jawab sini you know okay but this one is about strategy okay we know nowadays that you know the I know digitalization has made you know uh, the small players, uh, the startup, you know, uh, is uh, basically having the same playing field with the big players, uh, due to uh, if ever you're talking about media, you know, right? Uh, so kalau orang uh, dulu kalau kita nak compete dengan big big players, uh, small players have to invest a lot in a lot of this particular commercial and everything. 
Same goes to your industry. Okay, dulu uh, basically it is monopolized by TV Tiga, TV Satu, all these uh, big big player like CNN. Uh, but nowadays, uh, the small uh, small player just like uh, what you call influencer, you know, they can also garner money. They also can what you call yeah. contribute towards uh, uh, things that all these big particular player previously uh, monopolized. Okay, so that that particular perspective. Uh, in another perspective, okay, TVS. TVS is basically a uh, uh, we call it a, it's a new player, but we know, uh, to your point, that uh, we call this media industry is a very heavily what we call, um, uh, what we call investment in uh, what we call uh, industry. Okay, so the revenue have to be a lot to sustain. Okay, if ever, do you think that TBS can sustain uh, by itself uh, without being what we call uh, supported by the Sarawak government? And then what is your strategy in approaching this particular uh, particular objective? Mm. Good question. Okay, uh, it depends on how you view the media. Okay, for example, TVS. Kenapa TVS itu exist? TVS exist satu adalah untuk mendap- menentukan uh, information tentang development di Sarawak sampai kepada the people who need that information. Right, gelata, business, corporate dan sebagainya. Yeah. Now, the Sarawak State Government adalah funder yeah, because they own it. Yeah. Now, it, they can treat that as part of the public relations, corporate communications budget. Satu. Yeah, simple as that. Okay. So, they get all the tra- apa, uh, economic transformation to make Sarawak a uh, uh, high income uh, apa, uh, state uh, uh, by 2030, you know. So those strategies kena sampai kepada the stakeholders. Stakeholders adalah rakyat sebenarnya. Jadi, money has to be spent on corporate communications element into it. So that comes from the funder, okay. Now, status, uh, apa, if you ask me, that's also sustainable for any government untuk menyampaikan information, satu. And, um, uh, as a business entity, we have already started selling. Okay, after the first year. Normally, normally lah, if you ask me, a, a, a TV organization, they will only get back their money between 5 to 10 years. It is a long term. You, know? you tak boleh dapat second year, third year, fourth. There's no way. But you start growing, 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 growing. Within 5 to 10 years, you should be able to get your money back. Yeah. Now, that's the strategy. Now, uh, in fact, I've, I've, uh, I've prepared a presentation uh, untuk MCMC, I'm giving a talk for MCMC punya conference uh, end of the month. Okay, uh, I don't know, if you write to MCMC, if you want to participate in this one, you might want to, you know, uh, uh, masuk, I'm, I'll be presenting a paper. Because uh, moving forward, unless you have deep pockets, continue the way you do it. But if you ask me on sustainability, macam katakanlah uh, TV channel, uh, you start between 5 to 10 years baru you dapat. Itu pun tak guarantee lagi. Kalau you punya uh, revenue model is based on the traditional revenue model, which is basically advertising. Tetapi one thing that we learn on sustainability of CNBC, contohnya, yeah. Macam mana CNBC makes money? It's no longer from advertising, yeah, because they are kal- kal- dia kalah kepada Facebook, dia kalah kepada Twitter, dia kalah kepada Google, because the 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 digital players are actually robbing the uh, revenue from all these uh, TV broadcasting uh, setups. Eh? So what they do is they go into conferences. Conferences bring you a lot of money. You go to see CNN, uh, CNBC conference, sangat banyak conference. I attended a great conference. Kemudian they bought a watch show. They bagi uh, apa, the show kepada apa, um, uh, conference brought to you by Standard Chartered, brought to you by Bank of Thailand, brought to you by semua. Yeah, and uh, CNN pun ada CNN heroes at the end of the year and brought to you by me uh, in, in partnership with so so so. Jadi dia dah berbeza. Dia jadi event, you buat event, you buat conferences, you buat seminar. Jadi the money is uh, in a different form and that amount is big to sustain. Jadi uh, 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 in addition to that, I, I, I bagi contoh ya, Harvard Business Review Harvard doesn't start from, dia, dia, dia terbalik pula, daripada research, daripada universiti, dia jadi media. And now, uh, the most uh, credible, among the most credible media organizations hari ni, which is sustainable, is Harvard Business Review. They are selling online. 
So if you are not on on Harvard Business Review, you share share lah, tong tong among yourself. You know, you beli, uh, you subscribe. I think it's eight hundred per year. I subscribe, eight hundred per year, and it's sustainable. So, uh, 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 contohnya, a TV organization can also be a research. Punya ni, you just imagine kita interview ramai orang orang pandai, dan dia cakap pasal benda benda pandai. Uh, apa? Contohnya, future of work. You know. Uh, when you talk about the climate change and all that, and benda tu is not documented, benda tu ada dalam tu dan disimpan di dalam all TV stations. But if you transcribe it and then you sell those things, this is additional money. This is non-traditional. Jadi, jadi for any uh, TV setup with all these huge uh, investments going in, you have to be non-traditional and non-orthodox in coming up with your revenue models, and we are doing it. Uh, you know, so sekarang kita bekerjasama. Uh, contohnya for events kita dah bekerja sama lah dengan Sarawak uh, apa uh, uh, Symphony Orchestra negeri Sarawak contohnya and then uh, we are working together with uh, uh, Sarawak Tourism Board untuk apa ni uh, untuk uh, what do you call this uh, the coming rainforest festival uh, which is going to be hybrid in June contohnya jadi it's different jadi dia bukan saja uh, traditional advertising because kita, semua TV dah kalah kepada Facebook Google, you already lost the game, so you have to be clever in that sense, lah. And nothing is impossible. It's all up here. Macam mana kita that is. So I learned from CNBC, I learned from Channel News Asia. So, eh, kalau dia boleh survive, takkan dia dah boleh survive? Good, kan? Ah, kena berani lah. Tapi you must have deep pockets as backup lah. Ah, ini. Nah, bida. Okay, um, nampak macam yang ni je cik ni. Huh? <laughs> ni je apa business review. <coughs> you go online. Online dia memang best. Kan? Best. Tu pun baca. Okay, uh, so for today's uh, session, I think uh, that is a very valuable insight that we can uh, get from uh, the sharings itself. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Mr. Suhaimi for uh, being so generous and mudah-mudahan uh, rezeki semua, okay, uh, for for being with us this Sunday uh, morning till afternoon. Okay, so um, I hope that uh, next time we will have any other opportunity for the session with you again inshallah yes yes please enjoy so i mean if you have a, if you you you, know, you have the time uh, please macam ni lah macam ni lah ahad selalunya ai sunyi kalau ai tak makan kalau tak masak so if you are free on sundays you just uh, 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 uh. we can we can class so we can class saturday and sunday and then after that we play in the four o'clock <laughs> Yeah, but we, will, we will make time for you. Yeah. Make yeah. Time. As as I'll, free, I'll, time. I'll be more than happy to actually meet you guys again because I love this session. Because, yeah, this is fun. Yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. So, so grateful to have that. And then, uh, for for the last one, before we uh, finish our session, can we have our uh, photo taking session online? Biasa yang pergi TVS memang akan take uh, foto dengan uh, Mrs. Suhaimi setiap kali lepas uh, apa TV program. Yang ni kita semua ada different different session lah today. Siapa yang boleh ambil gambar? Nick boleh tolong Nick? Boleh boleh. Uh, I think semua orang boleh tolong. Ha, Mahani. Okay, saya ambil dah lah. Okay, maybe okay, everyone ready. Uh, Sandra, David, Lorita, Lepas, kita ambil gambar dulu. My camera tak bagus. Oh, saya tak Sandra. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, ada kita dah. Okay, ready. One, two, three. One more. One, two, three. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, me. Assalamualaikum. Thank you very much, Jaimi. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Jaimi. Thank you, thank you. Thank you again, Jaimi. Thank you.